Welcome everybody to episode 92 of the ADV podcast and uh, we have got quite a lot to talk about today. Some important things, some not so important things. 92, what were you doing in 1992? I was 12 years old. Hmm. So that's not the answer though, is it? Just trying to think what I was doing oh. when I was 12, probably watching Ninja Turtles or something. Yeah, I, was pro- I remember <laughs> Super Nintendo had just come out. Like, mm. and pilot wing remember pilot wings like i remember a, that that was a thing and then the super mario world that was a big deal big jump in graphics right 16. you know what else was around oh it was a uh, full effect <laughs> oh that's 93 my oh, apologies that'll be next gap. episode next, we'll, have a yeah, we'll, special. We'll, we'll bring that up yeah. all right guys so we're just going to jump right into it we're going to talk about what's new in china you know that's when we talk about pretty much what's new yeah with regards to china although i feel like the beginning of our what's new today is more like world news you know why? Because this is about a globe. <laughs> it's because it's about a globe. All right. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's talk about globes. Yeah. You know, um, there's a big issue with globes. You know that? Why is that? Because they're being made in China. Most yeah. most globes. Like when you go buy a globe. The average globe. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't go when, buy globes. When I go globe shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, you know, when you've got a kid or, or something and maybe you're a teacher and you need a globe to show your class, all of them are being made in China right now. Uh-huh. And, and China has some crazy ideas about the world. Yes. Okay? Yes. And they've got some crazy laws and they've kind of made it to a point now that if you get a globe made in China, it has to comply to Chinese regulations and laws. Which is insane because yes. if you are in, let's say you're an educator in America or mm-hmm. Canada or actually Canada might have capitulated because if you go on Google Maps, yeah. they say Taiwan, a province of China. Mm. Like when you type an address, not in America. Okay, let's say the US because yeah. I don't know about you, you Canadians. Sure. Um America, if you're an educator and you're teaching history or geography, yes, you pull out your globe and all of a sudden it's uh, conforming to Chinese standards yeah. just by like making Taiwan the same color or yeah. um, you know putting Taiwan um, PRC yes. next to it, yeah. like People's Republic of China. Then you're teaching wrong. You're teaching it wrong yes. in terms of how uh, people in, the, in other you're countries... You're teaching a, a Chinese-centric yes, view. That's, it's that's kind correct. of like if you went and bought a globe from, from Great Britain and it had every country in the world as part of the British Empire yeah. written on it. Yeah, you know what like, I mean? Yeah, it's like a, you bought it new, <laughs> but it's the old British Empire. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, the reason we're talking about this is here we've got um, Leapfrog, which yeah. is a very well-known entertainment, uh, sorry, kids Education educational company. company. Yeah. I'm going to call it Great Leap Forward. <laughs> okay, Great Leap Frog Forward. We have, we have Leapfrog products at home. Yeah. Uh, it's huge for maybe for you and for some people in other countries don't know this, but it's a juggernaut in terms of like edutainment stuff. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if you're a lot of a lot of stuff is used in schools mm. um, and at home as well. So they have like little tablets with their own proprietary apps and stuff on them. In this case, they have a uh, interactive globe. OK, so what's wrong with this globe, this new product from Great Leap Frog? Great Leap Frog Forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the problem with this one is actually goes further than the problem you talked about. Maybe the globes you're talking about will say like Taiwan PRC. This one not only has that, right? Mm-hmm. So it has a little screen on the bottom. If you click Taiwan yep. on this, right? Yeah, on that screen. On yeah. that screen. Or if you click it on the globe, it'll come up on the screen. Okay. It'll actually come up with People's Republic of China and give you the history of China, all the information about China, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's one issue. Mm-hmm. The second issue, you can see in the photo here to the right. It's very yeah. hard to see actually because it's kind so of up there. But you know the nine dash line. Yeah, you, I can see it. It's yellow. Yeah, well, it's kind of like it's a white and yellow, yeah. whitish yellow. So the nine dash line encompasses Taiwan, uh, the Spratly Islands, Parcel Islands, all of the territory around uh, uh, Philippines mm-hmm. and Vietnam. Yeah. all of the territory that's very much in dispute. Yes, and it's that the nine dash line is even worse than like including just Taiwan because that's like the we own the world. This nine dash line thing, thing is a bunch of bullshit, by the way. For those yeah. of you who don't know, <laughs> China claims that on this ancient map. There's this nine dash line that shows this was, you know, historically Chinese territory. Yeah. And because it was on this ancient map, suddenly all of these islands and all this part of the southern China Sea there, South China Sea, belongs to China now in the modern day. Mm -hmm. And so they're being very uh, bullish about this. And they keep putting that on maps and so on to say this is ours. Which is ridiculous. But because, that's on. Th- sorry, that's yeah. on Chinese maps. Yeah, right? on Chinese. This maps. is this is even worse. Yeah, because the the fact of the matter that nine dash line, yeah, they can put it on Chinese maps all they want because they believe it belongs to them. But none of the other countries surrounding China, the bordering countries, believe that because that's their territorial and waters. The UN and every other yeah. definition that means exactly. it's only China centric. It's not like you yeah. can say like, 
okay, Taiwan is the ROC, PRC, that whole one China policy. That's that's a different thing. Yeah. This is China centric. This yes. is not a worldwide belief. It. I mean, it's if you want to go with this historical crap, well then how about we go back into the history when, like I said, the the UK. Well, the British Empire owned half the globe. Why not just go and say, oh, yeah, well, guess what? You know, China belongs to Germany and England and all that, too. You could do that. You could be petty about this kind of stuff. You, you could also make Mongolia the exact same color as China and say the Yuan Dynasty because Genghis Khan conquered China. Yeah, exactly. You could go back and yeah, change. Oh, no, this is actually the Roman Empire. What <laughs> right. are you doing in our Roman, in our Roman <laughs> Wanda, place? Yeah, Wanda. exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I'm just saying this whole idea of this ancient map thing is bullshit anyway. Yeah. But the fact that they're trying to force this on the entire world is even more bullshit. You know, it's gun or whatever you say. We all call them the lawman, the Yeah, law. exactly. So <laughs> us anyway, Romans. Yeah, us Romans. You know, here's the thing. It's really frustrating because now children's uh, edutainment stuff is being tainted by Chinese propaganda and Chinese political messaging. Yeah. Okay, so it goes beyond that because it's not only that. If you look closely, they also claim that disputed part of India as well. Yes, correct. And they put the disputed part of India that's not the Chinese disputed part, the part that's um, sorry, uh, that has like the Kashmir people in it. It yeah. says like Kashmir instead of <laughs> India or whatever. Yeah. And it's so they can do the China part or the yeah. original Aruchanel Pradesh, Pradesh. I always pronounce that wrong. But that yeah. part of India that's disputed as well. It's just kind of crazy. It's, it's bad. And I, mm. I tell you why. It's, it's worse than just like, oh, fuck this product or whatever. Sure. This is an uh, institution in American education, right? So like... I understand that, oh, they're coming for our children. Ah, no kid's going to like look at this and be tainted for the rest of his life and be like, yeah, mm -hmm. I love the PRC. I love CCP. Yeah. That being said, it's a slippery slope, right? It is. When you allow that sort of wrong education mm -hmm. to be promoted by a genocidal authoritarian dictatorship, that's not correct. It's like having the Soviet Union or Hitler write your textbooks yes. about the Germany part or about yeah. the Russia part. Oh, Austria is a part of Germany. Right. You know, we, yeah, exactly. Because we make the globes. Correct. <laughs> when we went to school, we had a whole part about the starvation within the Soviet Union, how bad yeah. you know, the Soviet Union's government was and leadership was and the, the horrible famines that happened there. Yeah. We learned about the Holocaust. Six yeah. million Jews murdered, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if that section was nothing happened here. There was no Holocaust. Look, let's also let's also be honest. Like if you grow up and you have a globe and you learn geography from yeah. this gr as, globe, as I did, up, yeah, I'm very much into geography. So you you like grow up with this? Oh, this all belongs to China, mm -hmm. and that's in your mind from a child. That's yeah. going to change your your Perception. view of the world. Then you have to relearn it. Yeah, right? especially when you click on Taiwan and say, "I wonder what this country is. This island is cool, right?" And then it comes up with the People's Republic, and you're oh, that's yeah. just a part of that country. Yeah, I mean here here's the thing. <clears throat> This uh, Great Leap Frog Forward company um, probably isn't really at Frog fault word. here, to be honest. They <laughs> no, probably no. had to capitulate yeah. because in order to get this product manufactured in China, they would be breaking the law if they made a real globe. Well, I will say it's their fault because they chose to produce it in yeah, China. Yeah, that's true. They could produce it move in your India, Move Vietnam. your supply lines yeah. out. They won't make you... Vietnam's not going to have the parcel islands and sprightly islands is encompassed around a nine-dash line. Yeah, and India's not going to be like... We own Pakistan or something, no. and that's they not part of India. They might think that. Yeah, but they're not going to force that on your globe. They're not going to force that on your globe. They're going to make <laughs> yeah. your product. Exactly. Yeah. So bullshit, Leapfrog. Yeah. It is your fault, and mm. get your shit out of China. Yeah. It's just, it's time to move supply chains out. Everyone else is doing it. Uh, join, look, join the party. Here's the thing. It's also important to call out companies mm. that capitulate like this, simply because it sends a message yes. to them. Yeah. They're like, oh, maybe we should move our supply chain out of China. Maybe we should... Think about yeah, so contact, contact them. Yeah, just like why are you capitulating to the Chinese Communist Party's view of the world? Correct. And it's not brigading if you have, let's say you own a Leapfrog product, contact the company, you're a concerned customer, yeah. and actually tell them what's going on because they need to hear the message. They can't mm. just have like a podcast like us talking about it, whatever, sure. and then the news is over. Call them and be a concerned customer and say, you lost my business. Yeah. And everyone else's business that I talked to until you rectify this error. Yeah. And that's the same thing you're going to have to do with sponsors that sponsor the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. When the time comes, you're going to have to call Toyota and say, why are you supporting genocide? Right. Yeah. And they're going to have to listen to you and pay someone and waste their time to yeah. actually explain to you why they support genocide. I mean, I just want to know, is LeapFrog going to uh, release a real globe? You know, that's I mean, not a until China. Until they do, I hope China no one buys globe. them. Yeah. I saw some, I went on Amazon to check some reviews, huge number yeah. of people very upset and they're complaining about the yeah. uh, thing but you need anyway, to do that as well here's here's the thing guys uh we've we're going to move on from this uh this global issue yeah. and uh, <laughs> we're going to move on to 
another Chinese rap. Now, unfortunately, it's not all in English, but there's a little bit of English. So we want you to listen to this very quickly. Okay, we're going to bring it up here. We'll get ourselves out of it. And now uh, just listen very closely to the rap. It's your boyfriend. Okay, um, sorry. Uh, first of all, before we even get into this, you know they have this this shot right here in the beginning. They're all standing uh, yeah. on this collapsed. That's the biggest takeaway for me. Yeah. So they're standing on this collapsed building, and it's <laughs> the firemen. Yeah, the firemen, and it says on a big banner, "Rate Building Materials Market." <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Obviously. They couldn't understand what that sign says, but it's an English sign. They're just like, we're just going to leave it there. But basically, it's saying that the building materials are so shit in China that the buildings collapsed. <laughs> but it's true. Maybe it's like cut rate building <laughs> cut materials rate. market. It should be great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Great, great <laughs> building materials. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Anyway, um, this is a promotional wrap for firefighters. Okay? Yeah. Now, it's a bit confusing. Because uh, as you heard in English, they're like, um, what? It's your boyfriend. It's, <laughs> it's your, your boyfriend. It's your boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> it's your boyfriend. And the thing like is, um, boy shit. it is. Well, well, we'll play a little bit of it so that you can actually hear the Chinese. And we'll explain kind of what they're, what they're getting at here. So let's get back to it. It's not as embarrassing as the other ones. Yeah. the boyfriend part. Well, basically, yeah, the, what they're saying there is like, oh, it's your boyfriend, his phone number is 119, mm -hmm. and, and he'll be there for you whenever you need him, 24 hours a day. He's there to save you, that right. kind of thing. But right. basically, is, it's, it's cringe, but yeah. it's like, oh, the, the firemen are your, your boyfriends. But here we have this weird juxtaposition once again. You know how China's been on this um, kind of, I don't know, crusade to end the sissy boy thing? Yeah. They make the firemen look a little sissy, if right. you ask well, me. On, it's weird, right? Because they're yeah. trying to ban the sissy boy thing, and then they go and really just enter K-pop rip-off territory. Yeah, because they get some, shit version. some pretty handsome Chinese guys yeah. here to dance around, but guys. then they make them dance around like sissy boys. Which is fine, but yeah. they should but that, ban it. But that's it. against their... That's Don't against make it their, illegal yeah. <laughs> if you're going to make them do it. Yeah, let's, it's like that the army thing when they're dancing in the snow. <laughs> yeah, which we got copyright hit for, by right. the way. Right, we got... Co oh, yeah, so yeah. we made no money off last week's episode, yeah. and I think the one before that. Sure. We are hurting. We appreciate no, but people that support some, us. Some people may have realized that the last podcast we did after it was up it for down. about half an hour, it got taken down. That because wasn't of even a, us. Yeah, because of a copyright strike. And yeah. the whole reason was the clip that we took that the Chinese government yes. used yes. was using copyright music. Right. That specific little clip that uh, Hua Chunying posted on Twitter right. and that the Chinese state media was blasting out there. We got was, hit with that. Was using copyright music by WMG, yeah, Sony, Sony Media. Yeah. Of course. So they stole it. They stole it. They're using copyright stuff in their own thing, which hits us. It's ridiculous. And you know what's crazy? It wasn't like a lot of times if we get hit by with copyright, it'll be like, okay, you can leave this podcast up, but we get all the money from yeah. it. Yeah, no, but this was like... We, the, the they blocked it from down. world view. Yeah, no one's allowed to see this. So we had to cut that part out. So if yeah. any of you watched the last one and it seemed a little weird in some spots, that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully this doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, obviously this is a proprietary song. That they you think up. so? I don't know, man. They it's always pretty, copy things. It's pretty bad, though. Yeah, it's but not it, very good. It's not like you don't get bad rap. True. So... But this is pretty bad. It is. Okay, we'll play it out a little bit just so you can get, get an idea of it. Let's go. Okay, so... Yeah, you get the idea. You can see in the background, though, it's kind of cringe. Um, can you imagine uh, American firefighters doing this? Uh... I'm maybe maybe there's some you know there there's some cringe local shit in America. Yeah. The thing is, this is statewide, right? right. This would be like the WhiteHouse.gov putting something. Yeah. Out. Then what is the emergency number for fires in America? 
Well, you just call 911. Oh, you just call 911. Yeah. This is okay. 119. You know, in China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, it's so different to 911. They just changed it around. I think most it's countries... 119 I think instead a lot of 911. A lot of countries do that. <laughs> I'm actually. just saying, isn't that just a bit... Let's like let's make a difference. I know we'll turn it around backwards and yes. <laughs> make it one one. I a couple yeah. of things. I mean, this isn't not as cringe and as funny as some of the other ones, but it's good to talk about because number one, the sissy boy thing, which we find yeah. very hypocritical. Yeah, it's okay to be a sissy boy, do sissy boy stuff if the government makes it. Sure, not if you make it private privately. Yeah, if you're gay and you want to wear earrings and do stuff, then that's that's banned on media. Sure. But if the government wants to make sissy boy dances, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Number two, the whole showing the. Um, all of the standards, like safety standard stuff, like inspecting this and showing the fire extinguisher. Holy shit, if you've been to China, yeah. that stuff is so corrupt. That safety inspection sector, yes. they'll go around to get their stamp or their metal plaque. They will pay people off. Yeah. So the firemen don't actually show up in a lot of these places. Of Number two, not. the fire extinguishers are ancient and used up yeah. and they won't work in, yeah. in situations. So a lot of times you'll see a fire inside of an apartment and it can't even be dealt with yeah. because the extinguishers don't work anymore. The fire escapes, can be faulty or for example like when they came to my school and said i needed to have two fire escapes or whatever actually they were just asking for a bribe yes you can imagine how many places don't have fire escapes of course. that just paid the bribe one thing right? that i've found out from chinese propaganda is mm. that it's more of a a want like a wish list <laughs> yeah you know yeah, what i mean I like it's like, this, like is, this is what we yeah. want our country to be or be, be able to do but it's not quite there yet um and if you look they're showing how the firemen will show you look this is the sign that shows where to go okay which is pretty common sense but you know they, they'll do that for you they will show you how to look for the expiry date on your um you know whatever and we'll come to your school and talk to you about fire safety and stuff i i gotta tell you that's something that concerns me greatly in china is the fire safety yeah it's bad you know the uh, I've, I've actually got a video i believe somewhere but the apartment complex i was living in you know it's very typical in China, especially in Shenzhen. People run, run little companies out of their apartments. And by that, I mean like import-export stuff. They'll stock a bunch of crap chemicals and things in their apartment. They wrap it up and they ship it out from there. And clandestine factories. Yes, inside like, of apartments. Yeah, like like for, uh, level one apartments. Yeah. They'll put a garage door on it, start making fake beer, mm -hmm. making little trinkets, calculators, stuff like that. Yeah. Shut them down with cops gun. So anyway, somebody was... Uh, running a little company out of one of the apartments in my apartment block and it caught fire and it burnt five apartments yeah. in a row um and you know it was only after that that they started to do fire drills and stuff downstairs mm -hmm. and make a big public thing out of it but it was so haphazard i filmed it i've yeah. got i've got um footage of these mm -hmm. guys not knowing what the hell they were doing trying to figure out what a fire hose was you know the local bawan and stuff it was kind of crazy. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is it's really, really bad. That's why, you know, recently there have been a lot of explosions in China. And people have been thinking that it's some kind of unrest or something like that. But no, it's bad maintenance mm. and it's a lack of safety, you know. So a lot of these um, uh, gas pipes and things are not inspected and they're not taken care Actually, of. Actually, I, I want to use this as another opportunity. And I think mm -hmm. people sometimes think of being a bit pedantic when I call this stuff out, but it's very important that we stay factual when we talk about China because yeah. you'll see a lot of media, I don't want to name names, that will go to the other direction so hardcore. I'm not talking about shills. I'm talking about like trying to talk bad about the CCP or point out issues. Yeah. But they go so far-fetched into the, the realm of fantasy yeah. that it's not factual anymore. So when you see the reports, and I'm glad you brought the explosion thing up, it's like, mysterious explosions happen 15 in one day or whatever yeah. well no shit it happens all the time yeah. it happened when i was there there's not a terrorist there's not terrorists blowing shit up yeah no it's not some dude and they're like oh it must be because they're trying to uh protest the local government or protest yeah. the ccp so they say it's a chemical explosion but actually it was a no no it, there's actually it's just, actually a chemical just a chemical explosion, explosion. or a gas and explosion and it's a gas explosion yeah. and it's Remember the electric panels yeah. inside of apartment buildings. They are, you go to a nice apartment building and go on the roof of that one. We used to film the views of Hui Zhou on. Yeah. And you look at that panel and the whole box is fried. Yeah. And it's sparking. Yeah. There's and it's a massive fire hazard. And that happens nationwide. So, of course, stuff blows up, dude. I went to go visit some family in uh, Fujian um, back in the day, a uh, Chinese family. And in their house... They're sitting there watching TV, and I could hear this like. Kss, 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 yeah. kss, kss, kss. We've heard that sound. And I was many like, a time. "What is this?" Yeah. And I went to go look behind, and you know where the they plug into the outlet into the wall. One of the, the wires there was frayed, and it was arcing. 
So <laughs> it was like literally arcing, electricity. Yeah. Ksh, 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 and they had a tablecloth dangling down right next right to where next it was arcing. arcing. And I'm like, this is this is a fire hazard. So that was one instance yeah. in a country of 1.5 I mean, billion people. There's a there's a lot of lack of safety, unfortunately. Oh, man, especially with electricity. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. I, I saw a post the other day from a shill. Yeah. Pro CCB shill. And he's like talking about... Um, I wish I had this screenshot up here. He's talking about how amazingly convenient China is because his hot water didn't work because yeah. you don't get those gas bottles or something. Yeah, guy came up and fixed it or whatever. It cost him a couple bucks. Yeah, and you delude yourself. I think when you're living there, you're like, oh wow, it's so convenient that somebody very cheaply can come fix my thing. You shouldn't have broken in the first place, right? True. So much stuff in your apartment will break mm -hmm. in China because of lack of well, lack of quality. I remember we bought, which is very rare, a dryer, mm. clothes dryer. Bought a Chinese one because they did, don't really exist in China. But I was so tired of hanging on my laundry. Sure. So we bought one. And we had it fixed, I think, six times within a year. Mm. The guy would come up. He'd fit, replace some part, fix it or whatever. Charge not that much to fix it. And then yeah. I can use it for another couple of weeks. But that's infuriating. Yeah, Stuff is very poor quality and maintained. It's also, you, there are no qualified electricians or anything like that. Yeah. You have to understand. Um, my wife has an apartment in China. Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, she bought it new, and so it didn't have anything in it. Like they, it's just a concrete shell. So she had to do all the, the plumbing and the the wiring and stuff needs to be done after the fact, after you've bought the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. It will come with some basic like, uh, pipes and stuff, but you have to do all the wiring. So, they get just a shifu as they call them, which means master, master. Uh, from a Wu Jingdian, which is a hardware store. Okay, and the shifu will come up there and do it's all the wiring, but it's just a guy. He doesn't have like an electrical engineering no. certificate. No. He doesn't have anything like that, and so <laughs> he put this thing together so badly. You know the distribution board. Yeah. So I went into the place when it just they just kind of finished. Okay, I go in there and I turn on the power because you know they would always turn it off when you leave. Turn on the power, I start smelling burning, and I open it up and it's on fire and melting. <laughs> yeah, Seriously, yeah, yeah. I got yeah, I so I angry. And I called the guy up and I'm like, what are you doing? This is my wife's house. It could have burned down. And he's like, oh, no problem. And he just came and changed it with another like cheap, you know, distribution thing. He hadn't wired it up properly. And no. so there was a, a gap and it was, again, it was arcing and doing all sorts of stuff. Anyway, we're getting off track here. Yeah, but it's but important to talk about. You have to understand that um, there, there are plenty of issues when it comes to safety in China. Things like elevators. Escalators mm -hmm. were killing a lot of people at some point, believe it or not. I even made a video about it. Oh, Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, I've said this way too many times with the elevator in my brand new apartment building collapsed with a family inside. Yeah. Where I take my family. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know how it became a thing, but there were like actual multiple escalator deaths. Oh, escalators. Yeah. Escalators. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, they weren't properly maintained and stuff. Anyway. Oh, elevators eat people too. chop yeah. them in half. Yeah. Yeah. You see the that videos. too. It's pretty bad. Oh, my yeah. gosh. And he, again, why did they, why does that happen? Because the inspections are supposed to happen. Yeah. Just like my building maintenance, uh, the the owners of the building, mm -hmm. they pay the the g local government to give them the CCP stamp of approval. Yeah. This is a safe elevator, and they never actually got it checked. Well, you know, what? one thing about living in China taught me is it taught me how to be my own plumber and electrician. Yeah. yeah. I got pretty good at all yeah, of that. Yeah, you did. The, <laughs> you know, the, the, the faucets in the walls and stuff right. would break off. Remember, yeah, like, where the washing yeah. machine is, and you, like, try to yeah. unscrew it or at the toilet and just, like, break? Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway. Pig um, iron and stuff. Yeah. You could always go down to the Wu Jing Dian, which is the five metal shop, which means a hardware store. Mm -hmm. And you'd, you'd expect like a, a, a huge amount of things, right? But actually, unfortunately, they don't have a huge selection in those places. But what they do have is they have the exact same fittings that are used everywhere. So you can always find that replacement doorknob, that replacement pipe, that replacement thing, because everything in the building will be using the same stuff. So from that point of view, it's quite easy to fix things. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good yeah. point. Anyway, let's move on from our cringy fireman rap. Yeah, I thought there were some good talking points within that rap, you know. Yeah. And some good things to learn. And again, actually, I will say this is a, a net positive. Oh, yeah. Um, because fire safety awareness is good to have. Absolutely. So happy we need this. more of this. Yeah, more of this. So as much as we're making fun of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good thing. I still think the rate building <laughs> materials That's market. That's hilarious. And I think that what they were trying to do mm -hmm. was show, okay, this building, like something happened with it. And we're going to rescue people. But really what I see there is that buildings fall down in China and people die. Yeah. That's really what it is. Yeah. You know, bad, poor building quality leads to collapsed buildings. Correct. And if I hear tofu dregs again, I'm going <laughs> to have a meltdown. Stop saying tofu <laughs> dregs. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so that's that topic out the way. What else do we have in what's new? Uh, let's see. I think I put some other good stuff in there. Beijing Fire and Rescue. All right.
Oh, yeah. Oh, some classic. Oh, this is new. This but, is new. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys, look. There's a little thing that both of us get very annoyed about, and that's how foreigners are portrayed in China, okay? Yes. In media, okay? Yeah. It's usually a piss take, okay? If you're a foreigner and you're in Chinese media, it's usually about making fun about how different you are or, you know, look at these funny foreigners don't know how to use chopsticks or, you know, oh, this is a silly foreigners can't eat our spicy food or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. it's literally what it is, and it's like a hilarious thing for, for the local people. So it's like you, a white monkey thing, oh, right? It's actually like being a jester or a clown. Yeah, it's like, it's like, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. For It's for... The nationalists, right? Yeah. They can see a foreigner. Number one, they get a little bit of like, wow, they came all the way to our China. Yeah. Like that, we're so good that foreigners came to our country. Yeah. But more importantly, it's that they can't handle the complexity of yes. our country. Oh, you'll never understand China. Yes. You're not Chinese. That's something you'll hear constantly. <laughs> yeah. And it usually boils down to like things like, like you said, petty things like chopsticks and food. Yeah. It's yeah. usually food. Isn't it's it? usually Oh, food. you can't. You know what? The, the amount of times. Mm hmm this is a bit of a tangent the amount of times i heard and again this is not all chinese people. No, my chinese course. friends know that this is not a fact because a lot of them have been abroad but mm. the, a lot of chinese people that haven't left china think that chili peppers and spice comes from china yeah so they think oh we like in sichuan for example sichuan mm. province they yeah. eat a lot of spicy food we eat spicy food, so foreigners from different countries, they can't handle that. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? They don't realize that chilies aren't native to China. It's new world yeah, food. It was new world food that was imported to China. It's not only that. If yeah. we just fast forward to modern times, yeah. food that I find in the U.S. is much spicier than in way China. Way spicier. Especially if I eat Mexican or Indian food. Yeah. It's way spicier than Chinese food. Yeah, it's kind of funny because it, it seems to be this this idea in China that foreigners cannot handle spicy food. Mm. I, I don't know what it is. It is a thing. It, Bunang chilada. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Considering... Why chilada? It's literally a yeah, phrase. Exactly. Yeah. Yinung chilada ma. Yeah, yeah. Chilada ma. Yeah. You know, it's quite funny. Anyway, so we have a little clip to show you here of just a typical kind of thing that you'll see. So let's cl clean ourselves out. Oh, this is a shield. Yeah, yeah. shield. Oh, this is what? That cut. What is we, that cut? We didn't edit this. We we yeah. promise. This is the uh, you know the the Chinese media doing this. She says this is some word. That means yeah. like what flavor? What what kind well, of flavor is this? That's what they say in the north. Yeah, because yeah. they don't know how to say way dao, so they say yeah. were. Yeah, so like, in Mandarin, word? flavor Give it a word. is wei dao. Yeah, wei right? dao. Yeah. Um, and in northern China, it's wer. Yeah, wer. Word. But more, more importantly, she says, what like what what taste is this? Yeah. What, kind of, what kind of shit is this? Yeah, exactly. Let's, she uh, can't handle it. We'll play that again so you can see this wonderful edit. Um, and then... State media, by the way. State media, completely state media. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's sour. And... I don't know, it tastes weird. <laughs> Maybe it's better with some Thai. Mm, it's better like this. You know, it's really warming. Mm, Pause that for a second. It's, this is, by the way, yeah. before you get excited, that's not uh, freaking onion rings in no. front of me. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about I, how bad I also, Chinese breakfast is? It, it's really bad, but I got, I've got to say that if you're searching for something positive to say, and the only thing you can say is warming. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so there's a couple. Yeah, people are like, why is she eating onion rings in that soup? So yeah. a couple of things we can break yeah. down. It's like here. a yo tiao. It's like a, yes. Mm. Number one, this is state media. This is uh, people's people daily. It's people's yeah. daily. Remin Wang. Yeah. Um, so people's daily uh, web. web. Yeah. This is straight up state media. This is horse's mouth stuff. Yeah. This is one of their uh, shills called like Annie or something, but they mm -hmm. never name her properly, and she doesn't have social media outside of People's Daily. She's yeah. like a proprietary shill. Yeah, she did the. She she's in my Xinjiang genocide yeah, video. She did the Xinjiang uh, de genocide denial. Yeah, that kind she's of stuff. She's done a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. We don't know her at all. No. What we do know is that. She lives in Beijing, right? Yeah. She's had this before. Let's e be totally Everyone honest. that's lived and been in Beijing has tried that. We've tried that. Speaking of beans, it's all over yeah. China, for God's sake. Yeah, sakes. I know. So I've had that in Shenzhen. They make this out of like mung green bean or something. Anyway, yeah. it's like a it's like a green bean porridge type thing. Yeah. It's it's not it's bad. <laughs> it's it's not good. Yeah, but no, it's, it's not like, shocking. It's, yeah. I you know. wouldn't drink that and be like, oh my ooh, wow, this is horrible. Yeah. It's like, what is this matter? Yeah. 
And yeah. speaking it's like of matter, oats. the yeah, mm-hmm. the fried shit in front of her is don't get excited. This is not onion rings. <laughs> Yo Tiao is it's just oil stick. Oil stick. Yeah, it's, it's like a it's like a dough. churro. It's like a churro, but with, but no, with sugar no, no, no sugar, no sugar, no spice. It's just it's a deep fried piece of dough with basically. nothing on yeah. it, and it's not good. Yeah, it, you can wring it out. Yeah, you can. It's not it's not great. And there's also like some other like uh, you know. Oh yeah, let's let's see what happens stuff. what happens next. Did he or not? Wait, hang on. What did he say? You might think he's speaking Chinese, but actually he's practicing a little English. Oh, okay, excellent. Well, props to him. Yeah. Let's take a look. Did he or not? 北京人爱喝豆汁有三百多年历史，这豆汁啊是拿绿豆。干嘛？这还用？Oh, yeah. okay. So now this is a bit of a th- this is a bit of a throwback. Yeah, let's, let's just, explain this properly. We just this reminded us too much of other shows of the same ilk. Whenever foreigners are asked to, um, what, what did you find? Sorry, out? I was just making. I was. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's among making sure. Yeah, so yeah, they use Jiao Chuan. Jiao Chuan is. I was thinking of Yo Tiao. It's oh, like it's like it's that. like Yo Tiao, like right? Yeah. Okay. But they use it with um, like pickled vegetables, right? Right. And it's you know what it is. It's exactly the same as soy milk, except yeah. it's mung bean milk. Yeah. And it's it is a little bit sour. Mm-hmm. We've had it a million times, but yeah. it's nothing like you wouldn't. I just want. I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to say like you wouldn't. Give that to someone and be like, yeah, I can't wait to see their reaction. You know what <laughs> no, I mean? It's like, sure. whatever. But that's the thing. It's always like this. Here we've got the exact same thing from many years ago. I'd say about six or seven years ago. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Five, six, seven years ago. This show same that we're thing, going to right? show you. Exactly the same. State media. State media. We just wanted to show you She's that. drinking the same thing, right? Yeah, I think yeah. it's pretty much the same thing. Um, I just wanted to show you that. The, the way that they treat foreigners kind of like this jester um, clown thing hasn't changed at all. The methods no. haven't changed. Yeah, because this is old. Yeah, so let's take a look. We didn't edit this. No. It's gonna have to watch that again. Yeah, we will. It's old school. The yeah. new fans won't know this. Mm-hmm. This is uh, some Russian girl. She's one of the old shills. But anyway, yeah. um, I think she's Russian. Um, so it's definitely, yeah, from that part of the world. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. yeah, Slavic. So anyway, yeah. so she's um, mm-hmm. trying Dozer, right? Yeah. And again, the script is that off camera. You know what's, what's happening. You're saying with Annie or whatever her name was. Her name Annie. Anne. I think, I Anne. Think, I think so. One okay. of the, the German one. Yeah, I think she is she German. I think so. We don't even know. Mm. Uh, anyway, Annie or whatever. Mm-hmm. The first girl. You know, off camera, they're gonna say, "Listen, we want you to." We want you to say this is like really weird and sour or something. And they did mm-hmm. exactly the same thing about six, seven years prior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the same script. It's the same thing. With a different foreigner. What really annoys me is that how cringe it is. They add these like comical. It's a it's a very typical Chinese editing style. What? You see, really? yeah. what? You, you see that in reality TV a yeah. lot in China. in China. So they do it with Chinese people too. But um, it's it's really cringe how they try to make it into this like ridiculous clown act. Yeah, I want to make sure people didn't think we added that shit in there. No, that's no, that's mainstream that's, TV. That's how they China. did. It. They tried to do the same with us. Remember, when we um, we were trying to promote conquering Southern China. This is about the same time that this this was going on. By the way, it's about the same time period. Yeah. So yeah. it's about 2016 thereabouts. So we wanted to promote conquering southern china and we managed to get quite a few uh, magazines and newspapers and stuff to write up a nice piece about it because it's a great documentary everybody enjoyed it even the haters enjoyed it um the fact of the matter is that chinese media they wanted to write an article but instead of calling it you know like um the adventure or exploring they were like go show the lao wai come jungle it's like hilarious foreigners Look at China. That was their headline. They yeah. had to change it, it to, to this funny. like like we are so this jo- funny. This joke, this these like ridiculous, crazy foreigners. Yeah, you know? hilarious foreigners. I mean, there's funny parts of the show, but it's not a comedy. It's not a comedy. <laughs> no. Anyway, we'll play this lovely thing for you one more time. Well, we'll do it both together, back to back. Oh, for back to full, back for full for effect. full effect. Yes, bridge the gap. <laughs> bridge the gap. You know. Okay, so we'll start here. Well. <sighs> Okay, let's do it. So this is seven years apart. Yeah, seven years apart. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Mm, it's sour and I don't know, it tastes weird. <laughs> Maybe better with some Thai. Mm, it's better like this. No, it's really warming. <laughs> Did you all know? 北京人爱喝豆汁有三百多年历史。这豆汁啊，是拿绿豆。这是干嘛？这还用猜吗？当然是吃吃吃。Why did you do this？ 我们可以去找个好吃点的。好吧，好吧。我求你们，我求你们。好吧，走呗。我走。The slide whistle. <laughs> that guy. And then the guy's like, like oh, "Fuck no. this!" Yeah, I know. <laughs> this anyway. is so shit. It is. Oh my god! You remind you bring me back to the bad old days. Yeah, it's kind of funny though. This always pisses me off though. It's not like insecurity about like, oh, they're making us foreigners look bad. It's just like, why do you gotta do that? Know, why so, try to be original about I it? I know it's funny. Anyways, thought we'd share that with you since we came across yeah, that. Some yeah, some good insight. So I guess that's uh, everything in what's new. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, just double think, check. Okay, we're gonna double check. We might have something else. Yeah, no, we're good. No, we're good. So uh, let's have a couple super chats and we'll move into our main, yeah, our main <laughs> topic, which is a little more serious. Yeah. JETS yeah. says, uh, watch countering China's human rights abuses. Conversation with Bernard Henry Levy from the Hudson Institute. Charles Wilmax says, when is okay. the lunar when is the lunar New Year this year? How is it normally celebrated? It's on my calendar. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. And yeah, for it changes long? every year. It does. <clears throat> it's all about it's the lunar cycle, not the solar cycle, which look at the, the rest of the world follows. So it's so we were talking about that the other day. It's February first this year. Which February first? Okay, mm -hmm. it can be quite confusing because yeah. if you ask, I remember specifically. I just got to China, and one of the people that I I met, this girl, I asked her when her birthday was. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't tell me. She was yeah. like, oh, I'm, I'm not yes. sure. This year, it, you know, I, I don't know. It could be this. I'm like, how do you not know your birthday? But then it turns out it's because she was following the lunar cycle. You find a lot of the people from the more rural areas yeah. definitely follow the, the lunar it's cycle. It's not only lunar, but yeah. it also, yeah, well, it dictates like how old they are. Yeah. And so you meet a girl and I'll be like, yeah, let's say I was 24 or something. She's like, yeah, I'm 23. And I'm like, well, but your birthday doesn't make any sense for you to be 23. And she's like, well, this year... You know, I got to add one year because I was one when I was born. Yeah. And then like also if it falls on this lunar date, then that means actually I'm 22 this year. <laughs> or 20, You know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, what is good? Just look at your ID. I know. Tell me how old you are. I, I know. What did, like <laughs> I was saying, like, what about on a normal calendar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, that's what I would say <laughs> in no, Chinese. I, <laughs> I understand it's a completely different system. Sure. And I got respect for that and everything. But it's just oh, yeah. weird to get used to it. It is super Especially weird. a lot of people believe that when you're born, you're already one years old. Yeah. Because you've spent about a year in, in the, the womb, in the which kind of makes sense. I don't know. Nine months isn't a year. It's I mean, almost. it's almost a year, yeah. I guess. But I mean, it's, yeah, it's just a little strange. Think about it. maybe the sperm and egg were chilling out for a few months before. I don't think it works that way. Eh, you never know. <laughs> you yeah, never know. maybe there was an intention, an attempt, an attempt. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, cool. What do we got? What, oh, what's sorry. next? Um, Tung Fam, Tung Fam says, "Happy Lunar New Year to you and your families. May you stay uh, healthy and and happy. Thank you yeah, very much. It's coming soon." Nice. And it is, it's a massive thing in China. And look, this is also going to lead up into our main topic here because uh, the Chinese government right now is facing a rather daunting uh, prospect. And that yeah. is the Lunar New Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when people say it's the biggest mass migration or whatever every year in the world, it's true. Hundreds of millions of people travel to their hometowns. Because the way China has uh, developed in recent years is they've urbanized. In other words... You used to have everybody living out in the middle of nowhere, in the farmlands, in the yeah. villages, in the mountains, and all these places. And then this whole idea of urbanization popped up. Build these cities, people move into the cities, people go to the cities to seek work. And so you'll find people coming from all over the country to Shenzhen, for instance, where I used to live. It's a migrant city. And so when it's Lunar New Year, it's very important in Chinese tradition to spend the Lunar New Year with your family. That's the most important mm. thing. You cannot not be with your family on that day. No. People go through absolute hell every year to make it back on time mm. to spend Lunar New Year with the family. Mm -hmm. And so because of this, you have this ridiculous... I mean, I do have footage of what it looks like on the public transport 
that I filmed myself. I've tried to travel during that time. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. I've got footage of what those flower markets look oh like. Oh my gosh. In Guangzhou. Even, even in Guangzhou where I was living, it's yeah. like calf and you can't move. No, it's ridiculous. So you've got hundreds and hundreds of millions of people traveling all over. And right now with the pandemic, yeah. it's a nightmare right. uh, for, for the Chinese government because they've told everyone that, you know, COVID's over. Yeah. Um, in China. Yeah. COVID's over. But now they're having breakouts of the Omicron variant yeah. um, it, all over China, actually. You know, we, oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's not. Dude, if you tune in the state media, mm. the amount of people that reached out, including I'm not going to I won't say who yeah. uh, some people that we very know very dearly are getting full on lockdowns. And you yeah. wouldn't ever know, even from Chinese media. Yeah. See, prior to this, they were saying, oh, it's only bad in this area. And yeah. they'd say Xi'an or Beijing or Tianjin or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, but it's nowhere near here. And then turns out they're in lockdown. They can't get their food supplies in their gate at their house. Yeah. So everyone's freaking out. They're going crazy, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, holy shit, it's real for them. Yeah. But the next town over doesn't know about it. Yeah. Or the next, like, the, the next city over doesn't report on it. Or national media doesn't report on it. So you're in a situation where the can keeps getting kicked to the next place. Sure. They suffer, they freak out, maybe they give, even get a little bit anti-government. Yeah. And they're like, fuck this, it's really disrupting my life. Yeah. You can't get anything done, can't go to work, can't earn money, can't mm -hmm. get to the hospital, people are not getting hospital treatment. Oh, it's terrible things happening. Um, but then the ne uh, pe other people don't know about it. Yeah. So then they're like, well, it's only there, right? Well, how's this for ridiculousness? Okay, Shenzhen, where I used to live for, yeah. and I lived there for 14 years. I know people in Shenzhen right now who are, who are going around saying, there's nothing wrong. Everything's cool. Look, oh yeah, there's some lockdowns in Xi'an or whatever, but it's not here. I also know people in Shenzhen who are currently locked down. Their apartment complexes have been told, you're not allowed to let anyone in and out. They've actually been sealed off same. and they've been locked down. In the same city, it shows you how well they control the media and how, yes. how insular everybody is there. Because you've got people literally in the same city saying, there's no problems in Shenzhen. There's no lockdowns. Everything's cool. It's just like no it always has been. Advising, see. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And at the exact same time, I've got people who are literally sending me videos from inside their apartments and saying, I've been locked down here for three days already. We don't know when they're going to let us out. And it's in the exact same city, just in a different district. Same thing with very, very people, people very close to me. Mm -hmm. Calling me saying, holy shit, this just got super real. But then... Another thing happens, and this is again how well, how dangerous it is to control media like this. Mm. There can't be any, this is by design. Yeah. There can't be any, any unified panic, but not just panic, there can't be any unified dissent. Yes. Right? So the dissatisfaction is always local to the area. Mm. It can never be something else's fault. This is from the top, by the way. Yeah. This is national security stuff. Like sure. Beijing dictates what these areas do ulti sure. ultimately. Sure. Right? So, the thing is, like, they always have a fall guy, though, is if there's a big problem, they can be like, oh, that local official, and they'll, like, sure. hang him or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, these people are freaking out because it blindsided them. Like, crazy. They had no preparation for this. Yeah. They can't get, can't get what they want, but they always blame it on something foreign. Yes. So, turns out, for this this situation, um, someone from a different city, I, when I say foreign, it doesn't necessarily mean foreign country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But from an area, came from a different place. Yeah. They drove in. And then now they're shutting everything down. There's no cases. Yes. No one got it. No one got Omicron. But they're shutting everything down because that person had it and they drove in. Yeah, because they know place. somebody who had it came here. Yeah. So just being making sure. Yeah, but they're not from, they're not local. They're no. just some scum. They, they from came a from a place. neighboring city yeah. or neighboring province. And they always demonize province. that place. Yeah. Right? So that's, and it's parallel to um, what happened in Wuhan. Mm. When it found when it was found out that it came from Wuhan, people in China were like, "Fuck Wuhan people, disgusting yeah. people, yeah, yeah. rats." You know, there's yeah. all this horrible slander against Wuhanese people mm -hmm. because that's where it came from, right? Yes. So then all of a sudden, China's like, "Oh no, it didn't even come from there." And then they're like, "Okay, well Wuhan, yeah. you're fine." Yeah, you're fine now. <laughs> so I mean, I guess we better just get straight into yeah, the yeah. soft power hour where we talk about what we're talking about right now, actually, and that is how the the Chinese government is controlling the narrative when it comes to COVID specifically. And there's been some crazy stuff going on okay yeah again if you are living in china it's difficult to know about these things yeah. because it's complete you get complete media blackouts <clears throat> yes. when there's a like i said when there's a lockdown in a specific area in a big city they won't tell the rest of the city because i guess they don't want panic and they don't want to look bad as if their zero COVID policy isn't working so 
they'll just no, keep it hush hush. It's, it's they'll not. keep it hush hush. And so the the rest of the population walk around oblivious to what's going on. And this is something that I've always said about China is it can seem like the safest place in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's because you just don't know about the bad things that are happening. Yes. Just like here in America, it's it can seem like the most dangerous place in the world, but you personally will never see anything bad. Or you know what I mean? If you do it's if you do, it's not like anything like you see on the media. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like I in my entire experience living in America now for a couple of years, I personally have not witnessed a, like a bad crime, mm -hmm. you know, or a shooting. I've never once seen a shooting. No. But you would think if you watched the media that there were like mass shootings everywhere and crazy. So what I'm saying is... It's I mean, it is bad. Yeah, of course it is. But, yeah. but here's the thing. I'm saying mm. if the news hadn't told me about these bad things happening in America and about racism and stuff that happens in America, I have not seen it with my own eyes. Right. So if the news hadn't told me that, I would think America is the it's safest utopia. place in right. the world. Right. And that's what I'm saying. It's the same in China. Right. If the news is not telling you that somebody got murdered around the corner or that there's a breakout in that neighborhood over mm -hmm. there because they don't tell you that, you walk around like an oblivious zoo animal thinking that everything is cool. And that's where transparent media is very important. This is where we can get rid of the whole partisan thing. Guys. Yes. Is, there are issues in America mm -hmm. and then they're talked about, right? Yes. The racism. The oh, shootings, man, it's talked the, about around the entire world. Around the entire world. And you talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's how at least reform, yeah. right? This is what's been alarming me actually recently, and not—I don't want to name names—but some influencers that I see on um, on American media yeah. or, or Twitch, things mm. like this, right? And it's like I don't even disagree with a lot of their takes, right? Sure. But then they'll use something like China as an example of how things are being done right. <laughs> yeah. And that's a big problem, is because. I don't disagree with their takes. I don't disagree with their takes on America necessarily, like yeah. a lot of them. Um, but China all of a sudden becomes a, uh, a good example. And this is dangerous because it's um, a lot of young people will watch these. Yeah. You know, whether it's a streamer, a YouTuber, or uh, someone even on the news, right or left, this happens on both sides, is that, okay, we disagree with China on some things, but they're doing this right, and mm. that's better than America. Yeah. And that's super, super dangerous because... Yeah. You're use what what's happening is here. These influencers are using data, public data from the Chinese government, yes, to say this statistic is so much better in China than in America. When we're talking about a country, and again, these graphs need to be used when influencers use China as an example. Is show the graph of China having the fifth or sixth worst worst press freedom in the world. Yeah, actually, no, it's the third worst. Yeah, it's yeah. like one seventy seven out of one eighty. You have to use figures like this sure. to make sure that p the public understands that you're looking at data that's been crafted. In my video, yeah. I found out that they're using, when they did a, a sample data, when they polled people in China about what their favorite country was, they made up the website. They it's made a, it up, it's yeah. a made up website for data. The data isn't real coming no, out not. of China. So when we say, oh, you can't trust the numbers coming out of China, we're not talking shit. No, we're talking can't. about a country that manufactures every single fact and every single figure. And you can't compare a nation that has clandestine, or, or what's it called, um, a third party uh, surveyors. Yes. They have uh, focus groups. Yes. They have people that go around and, and are able to do a third party censuses and not, not related to the government. I mean, look at America. China doesn't have that. America is judged by the entire world. Right. Okay. And right. they allow it. And, you know, people can come in here from wherever, can come here from India if they want and do a mm -hmm. poll and ask people on the street things right. or, or film whatever they want. But you can't do that in China. They don't allow foreign journalists to just willy-nilly go and do anything. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're getting a little off track here. We have to talk sure, about sure. the lockdowns. Yeah. Now, we're going to show you a little clip over here in the background. Um, okay, it's got a little bit of audio. We'll play it quickly. Now, I, I have to say, uh, I'm a little skeptical about this drone footage. You know why? Why? I can't hear the drones uh, rotors. And sure. Being a drone pilot myself for many years from the beginning, that that audio is no, just dubbed sense. over. That's not. It cannot be. That's not real. the point, though. They use this for soft power to say, mm. like, look how te for us this looks yeah. dystopian, but for China yeah. this is like, look at how technologically advanced. We yeah, are. we're we're gonna send a drone out with a loudspeaker, but I'm just saying that looks like bullshit to sure. me. Sure. Yeah. Um, Probably is. Yeah. So they've got a drone flying around saying, you know, oh, be careful and you know, take care, and it's a lockdown, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we've got pictures coming out of Beijing here, which are, you know, now, what does it even say, that one? You, you cropped it out. I Have you got the it. original one here? The according to the pandemic? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, it's just, it's, I'm just showing what's happening right okay. now. They're doing force testing yeah. um, in Beijing. And that's the reason that we brought this up. This is all Beijing stuff, by the way. Yeah. Um, the reason we brought this up is because the Olympics is coming up here. Yeah. And with China's zero COVID policy, it means no one can have COVID, right? Yeah. So the worst nightmare for them was to say, oh, it's hit Beijing. Right. Yeah. And that's that's something they've kept out. Like even at the peak pandemic, Beijing was never a hot spot for them. Yeah. Even if it did have cases. Yeah. Um, they could never make it a hot spot. Yeah, right? they could never admit that there were cases there. So what they've done now is they said this is a one case or whatever. And they're forcing yeah. everyone to test and stuff ahead of the Olympics. I think mm -hmm. it's a bit of a fail safe for them. Because what you what what's happening here is what you're seeing is leading up to the Olympics is that mm -hmm. they're very worried that diplomatic boycotts will make too much attention. Or the wrong story will come out about Uyghurs or something like this, human rights, and it'll get enough traction that it, it'll start to get uh, attention of Chinese people as well. Mm. Um, so you have a failsafe here that maybe they could even postpone if they needed to maybe. for COVID, uh, because then you have the excuse that, oh, we found a case in Beijing and all this sure. kind of stuff. So I'm not, I'm just speculating. That's a speculation. Yeah. Uh, totally speculation. But it, right <laughs> now it's what their worst nightmare was is that anything came up in Beijing. But mm -hmm. they have a scapegoat. Yeah, they do. You know what else they've done now? What? Is that they've threatened athletes. <laughs> they've said that if a oh. any athletes disrupt, um, you know, the, the Olympics and, uh, you know, break the laws of China. This is worrying. That they're going to get punished. Under IOC rules, excuse mm -hmm. me, under IOC rules, um, the Olympians should be allowed to express their freedom of speech. Yeah, when they can get disqualified the or they can they make it They could get like yeah. penalty points or something if they, I don't know, kneel on this podium or do whatever. something like that. But yeah. in the within their own rights or whatever. Yeah. And right now, China's saying, no, that's not the case. To me, that is a call to disband the IOC, because if the IOC approved Beijing's laws mm. to be applicable in that circumstance, that goes against the original Olympic principle. Yeah. That's wrong. To me, yeah. that's wrong. That's that that's you. I mean, I don't want to be an extremist about the Olympics here, but I don't think that's a legitimate organization anymore. Yeah. Well, you, we just have to be very careful because if Beijing does, um, you know, punish athletes, well, if, any, if anyone like Enos Cantor or something right. was planning to go out there and wear his freedom shoes or something like that, he'd probably be arrested, deported yes. or detained or something. And uh, that's that's, not, you don't support that. No, you can't. How, how are you supporting this thing? No. Anyway, we've got some more lockdown stuff that's kind of interesting. We'll just skip past this stupid drone footage nonsense. Well, the, the next part's important to know what yeah. they're saying. Yeah, okay. Here. Okay, so this is... No, yeah, go yeah. This is a translation here. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, Chinese state media uh, translated. It says, after contact tracing and finding no evidence of a local train of transmission... Mm -hmm. This is important, guys. The latest theory on how the... Per this is in Beijing. The latest theory on how the person who got the virus is from a package she received from overseas. Yes. So for those of you who are not in the loop here, they found an infected person in Beijing. Someone tested positive for Omicron variant. Yes. So they're scrambling around. They're thinking, oh, crap, how did she get it? And so, um, yes, they're saying she got it from a package from overseas. Genetic testing of the packaging the woman kept from the international parcel showed traces of the virus on outside and the inside. Genetic sequencing shows that this strain of Omicron is different from the one circulating in China and most likely came from overseas. So immediately yeah. after this, right? Yeah. Wait, wait, before you, even, oh, before you get into this, if you receive a package, okay, you receive a package from overseas and you have COVID. Even if it's a different strain. Yeah, you've got COVID. Yeah. You receive this package and you, coughing it, maybe like handling it, you open yeah, it up. Spit on it a little bit. You, you're doing whatever you do with the package. Wiped your face, opened it. You become tested positive, okay? They come to your house. <laughs> they test the package that you opened and manhandled and say, it came from this package. <laughs> yes. Isn't that stupid? Could, could it potentially be from the person handling the package? Could it be the, the, the last the, person that handled because the package? They didn't test this package before she got it. They only tested it after she tested positive. So they may as well test the freaking the rest of her house to find all the COVID there. So the scientists that mm -hmm. went through this. Uh, test this apple that she bit. bit. Here right. we go. <laughs> you know what I mean? The apple. Yeah, it's going. this apple had. Come on, guys. So the the, <laughs> the scientists that saw this, yeah. this is from state media, by yeah, the way. Yeah, state media said this. They were like, this, I mean, as much as they tried to not stifle the laughter, they probably did because you can't read the laughter in writing. But yeah. this, they were like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Number one, COVID is a uh, respiratory illness for the mm -hmm. most part, right? Mm -hmm. 
So you, the chances of you getting it on a package, that was discounted well early, right? Yeah, yeah wash your hands, keep it safe and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But the easiest way to get it is through respiratory. It's through, that's why we wear masks. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's why, you know. So anyway, the, the scientists were like, this is preposterous. Yeah. This is absolutely no way this could have come from the package. Yeah. And number two, I find it hilarious mm -hmm. that China can never find any clear human, human human to human transmission of COVID in the beginning of COVID. Yeah. And then number two, say absolutely didn't come from from China. It came from Italy. No, it came from India. No, it came yeah. from Japan. No, it came from Australia. No, it came from America. They can always find where it comes from, unless it's in China. Yeah, exactly. They can, then they can never find it. No, then no, no. It comes from mystery. frozen seafood, or it comes from some other bullshit. So where did this package come from? Canada. No, this is very important. It coincides with what I just uh, just did in my video. Yeah. China's got a hate boner right now for Canada. Yes. And we talked about flavor hate of the week. Yeah. It's when Ca uh, China decides to hate a certain country. Yeah. And state media will say, hey, we hate this country. Now, Canada, unfortunately, who has capitulated to China many times, um, and a lot of, this is really weird, but mm -hmm. a lot of the shills that work for state media in China. Yeah or sympathize with the Chinese government and make content on YouTube and things like this. You know what people yeah, are yeah, talking about. Yeah. They're Canadian. Yeah, And true. I find this very insane because like China decided that Canada is the most hated country because they did a poll, Yeah, a poll that they've dictated yeah, themselves, yeah. A, fake a fake poll, yeah. to say that China is the most hated country, or Canada, Canada is, is the, the most, most hated, hated country, country in China, China yeah. amongst Chinese people. Mm -hmm. After all this, partnership this, and Canada's our friend, bully America, all this kind of stuff. Canada is what they voted as being the worst country in the entire yeah. world. No, it's it's just crazy. But this it coincides it, with this. Again, back to this whole whole oh, they found COVID inside the package. Yeah, because she right. opened it and touched everything inside <laughs> the thing. Yeah. I mean, it it just beggars belief that they would expect people to believe this. And it's not like a stupid tabloid thing. It's state media put that out, guys. Yes. State media. Well, I'm just saying it coincides with the hate Canada thing. Yeah, it does. Because they're like, oh, it came from Canada now. Yeah. And all the scientists are like, no, it absolutely not. Yeah. This is ridiculous. So now it, it kind of got legs, this whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they said testing resulted in finding traces of the virus on 22 other packages as well. Handlers of these packages have been tested so far and shown no trace of infection. Okay. So then doesn't that debunk their entire theory? Because yeah. the people handling these packages didn't get it. No. Anyway, <laughs> the route the parcel took was Canada, US, Hong Kong, Beijing. Okay. So... By using their but their wait logic, by using their logic, it could have come from the U.S. or, or Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Wouldn't it make more sense if it came from a place that was closer to the? the... Yeah, because it could survive like maybe the day. It does. It's not going to survive three weeks on no. a package in Canada. Yeah. Anyway, city officials recommend, if possible, don't order anything from abroad. Now you see where this is going. Yes. This is this whole cut. Now it now, makes sense, right? Now we got to cut ourselves off from the rest of the world. So don't order anything All from coming, abroad. It's coming to fruition. Everything we've been saying. Yeah. This whole like with the the whole thing about COVID is that they're people are like when are they going to open their borders? When are we going to be let back in? When are we going to be especially able to go those to annoying China? students? Those, those students are like Stop. let us back in. They don't want you. Okay. They Just don't want get you over to finish it. your degree there. Yeah. I know it sucks, but get a refund. Try to get a yeah, refund or something. Go to don't, Taiwan if you can. Go somewhere else. You're yeah. not going to be let back in yeah, China. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But they 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 keep pushing it down the road. Oh yeah, we'll open our borders next year, next year, next year. Mm. They love this, dude. Yeah. This is the whole plan. Is that China's been trying to close off we, when yeah. we left China? This when we started noticing this stuff happening. Yeah. They don't want foreigners there yeah. unless you're a shill for the state. Yeah. And even then, you'll get kicked to the curb when your use is up. So China's yeah. on in the process of, of closing, closing off, off to yeah. the rest of the world. They want to be exclusionary. They want to be this, uh, you know little bubble that, that that excludes the rest of the mm. world and so they say use gloves and masks to open packages open packages outside and throw away the packaging before returning home right so you see this is um a lot of fear mongering going over here but again it's the inability of the chinese government to admit that there could be locally transmitted cases within china it always Guess has what? to come from outside omicron is incredibly contagious yes it's spreading like wildfire everywhere everywhere and your zero covid policy you got to change strategy if you want the propaganda to work because that's not the thing. That's not what's going to stop it. No. It's so, so contagious. Yeah. You need to take different steps. Yeah. Because people are walking around without masks in China. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you guys think if China's some like massively like pol authoritarian police state. It's true, but it's a mess. Sure. People are walking around without masks thinking everything's fine because the government told them it doesn't exist. Yeah. Now the government's scrambling. They're having pool parties. Yeah. Government's scrambling now saying, oh shit. 
But we can't let anyone talk about it. No, so we can't. we can't tell them it's a big deal. Yeah, exactly. We'll it's lock down areas. Absolutely know? ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So, um, going, yeah. yeah, it gets it gets uh, even Crazy. crazier. Okay. Here, this, this <laughs> Weibo post had, what, over 60 million views it or something? Huge. It's, it's verified as well. Yeah. You got a verified person. Uh, think of like a, a trusted, I don't know, blue check mark on Twitter or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. Put out, um, you know, a post basically warning everybody that uh, you shouldn't be um, getting packages from overseas because the what, what was it something about the black hearts of um, yeah yeah uh, yeah we, I'll we read wrote, some yeah quotes. read read some of the quotes. It says it's reason. These are some comments on here or yeah. from the from the post actually. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable to suspect that someone poisoned us deliberately. Yeah. Definitely have to be alert towards international mail. Yeah. Said one of the comments. Um, this has more than 50 million views. Yeah. The people well, of us. That was a couple days ago. Yeah. The people yeah, at the time of writing. Mm. The people of certain countries, the blackness in their hearts is powerful. Yeah. So the people of certain countries, the blackness of their heart is powerful. So you see, this is a viral post that is saying that it's deliberately. From Canada. From Canada. People poisoning letters China. with COVID. Yeah, like a biological weapon. Yeah. They are saying that it's uh, intentional. Another quote, poisoning from a thousand miles. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And another one, at every turn, it's the responsibility of a foreign country. Yeah. Can they not see the hypocrisy? Here? Yeah. At every turn, China's blamed a different country for COVID. Yeah. Guys, right. you got to get a handle on this. This yeah. is absolutely insane. And it's causing crazy xenophobia right yeah. now. I just, now Canada's labeled the ugly country. Yeah, the ugly country that's poisoning us. In fact, that's... that's um, Oh, you didn't put it in there, but um, sorry. Yeah, no, we got some some quotes. Yeah, they're basically saying oh, yeah, Canada is the up. ugly country that has poisoned us. Okay, yeah. how ridiculous is that? Yeah. Um, this this whole idea of creating an enemy out of the outside whenever there's a problem in China is so overused. I'm surprised people still buy it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So just remember. Everybody, when you are being told that you're being racist or xenophobic to to mention that, um, you know, China, the, the, the COVID may have come from Wuhan, a lab in Wuhan or something. Remember that in China, in viral posts and on state media, they are saying that it came from your country and that you are Beijing, deliberately poisoning them. Yeah, Beijing's claim is that an ugly nation sent them poison. Yes. <laughs> okay, are, are you an ugly nation? Are you sending poison? Isn't it like completely uh, xenophobic and racist to say something like that about another yeah. country? Yeah. It's and terrible. It's also not fair because there's a lot of Chinese people that live there. Yeah. You piece of shit. Don't yeah. be, don't be Ca racist Canada against Canada is like, what, people. half Chinese anyway? I know. Jesus Christ. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, um, just so you know, everybody, that China is blaming you for uh, any COVID outbreaks in China and uh, basically calling you a... An enemy who's trying to poison them. If you're Canadian, anyway, right now, Isn't don't that ever, don't ever. Th I mean, the country that sows people sow Canadian patches on their backpacks and they travel abroad because they want to be safe and not people not to think they're American. Yeah. Well, and if you're ca Canadian in China now, you better play it safe. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately. Yeah. Stop uh, flashing the maple syrup around as a as a shield. You know. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch me. I got maple syrup. Poor Canadians. Um, anyway, so nice. uh, talking about all these little. Um, incidents that have been going on this yeah, is uh, there's actually some protests going yeah, on yeah there's there's a little protest going it's rare. on it's, it's rare but you see the footage leaked it's not rare i was gonna say it's rare to because see. it's not reported at yeah, all. yeah there's you, tons of protests in china they get yeah. shut down and people get arrested and thrown away in jail forever yeah uh here we've got a little um protest going on in shenzhen actually um and over the extreme lockdowns where people don't get again this isn't even about lockdowns this is when you spring something on people and they don't know it's coming yeah, because you you've been told that there's no COVID in China. And again, all right, somebody who's living in Shenzhen right now will be like, "Oh, you're talking crap. I I didn't see this. It didn't right. happen. Of it's course, you didn't see areas, it. It's yeah. in freaking it's not little, reported. A little Shao Chu in Baoan or Longgang or wherever. You won't see that stuff because you're walking around in Futian and in Lohu and stuff in the CBD, going to the Mixi Mall or to some fancy Coco Park or something. You're not going to see that. No, you know that's that's the thing. how cut off media is in China. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway. Um, just to show you, people are not happy, okay? Well, because they're not getting their food supplies. They've been told that they could leave, and then all of a sudden they lie and they can't. Don't let people out, mm -hmm. you know. I've had I've had people reach out personally. 
Sure, me too. I've got, like I said, yeah. I've had people send me videos of themselves stuck in their apartment. In their apartments, and this is in places that are not even claimed to be in lockdown. Correct. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, it's, uh, and of course, we can't show you that because we'd be putting their lives in danger. You have to understand. Yeah. For those no, of you wondering, like, where's the footage? Um, you know, that would be really stupid can't for, show personal for me to show my friends who are currently locked yes. down in Shenzhen because that would just put a big target on their back. Yes. Um, okay, so that's a little thing going on in Shenzhen. And we've got something else that happened in, in Xi'an coming up here. Mm -hmm. I believe that's next, yeah, right? right after this, okay. Yeah. Let this play out. A little bit of unrest. Very, very happy right now. Yeah. Mm. Come on. I mean, you you got to start becoming annoyed where, when, yeah. you know, you keep getting locked down. You keep having to be tested. You know, like those COVID tests are awful. Yeah. Yeah. I had to have a COVID test the other day because like I thought I was feeling a little sick. Right. So I went to one of these free COVID test things they've got yeah. here where you do a drive through. They yeah. shove that thing all the way up your nose. Yeah. It's not nice. No. Okay. Now imagine having to have that done to you like two times a day or whatever they do whenever they have these lockdowns, like a huge amount of times all the time. Like it's going to get annoying. Of course, and, and you have to line up with a COVID line. I know, and especially... <laughs> Where especially, everyone's cutting in line. Think about it, okay? You've tested negative right. every time, but they keep forcing you to do it again and again and again. And you're like, what the hell's wrong yeah. with you? You know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm well, stuck not only in my that, apartment. You're stuck in your apartment, yeah. and then you go out and jostle around for six hours in line with a bunch of people yeah. who are not properly wearing masks. I know, isn't it lame? You're putting yourself at way more danger. Yeah. And that's the thing with quotas and mandates in China. Yeah. Logic doesn't apply there, right? Yeah. I believe in testing. I believe in uh, masking. I believe in yeah. social distancing. China says all those things and then yeah. it doesn't apply in practice yeah and like no let's jostle not social distance and not wear a mask properly while we get in line for mass testing twice a day yeah and let's all rush to get a vaccine yeah. <laughs> and trip over each other and right stuff. i mean I, I have to say this whole idea of the the drive through testing thing in america is great it's fantastic it's great because yeah. everyone's in their car yep all the windows are rolled up you know you drive up the people wearing proper ppe they do a little test you know that's it you drive off and then they email you your results Listen, I've been in the hospital enough times in China to know that I'm going to be honest. If you're talking about mass testing across the whole country, do you think they're changing gloves every single time that of they're course swabbing not. people? No, no you, this is huge. you can see the footage. They don't change the gloves. Nope. We've seen the footage. Yeah. This is a huge liability, yeah. a huge mass problem. And sure. again, logic doesn't apply in China a lot yeah. of the times. Yeah. Authoritarian dictatorships, they decide something. It doesn't matter how it happens. Yeah. So here again... This is what's happening in uh, Oh, Shenzhen. people are pissed off, and I yeah. would be too. I would be too, for sure. Especially when you've been told that COVID doesn't exist in your country. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, what's going on here is in Xi'an. Uh, okay, we talked about Xi'an in our previous podcast. Mm. Serious lockdowns there. People actually running out of food. Yeah, because that's we, in central China. Yeah, yeah, in central China. We were talking about the whole thing about buying fresh. And so that most people do not have a lot of refrigerated goods, yeah. long-life goods in their house. And they depend on going out to get food. So yeah. a lot of people have been caught unawares. Okay. Because yeah. these lockdowns are quick and sudden. It's mm -hmm. not like you get a warning. Because of media blackout. Yeah. They're not like coming soon. They're like, no, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, exactly. No, now you, you can't, can't leave now. So the government has, uh, of course, made big strides and, and uh, attempts to, to put on this propaganda that they're feeding everyone. And you right. see these really stupid propaganda videos come out where they have a line of people passing food into like a co an apartment complex, which they wouldn't have to do if they just parked the truck at the gate. But what they do is they park a truck around a corner and then you see them offloading from the truck and passing down this like human chain to give the food into the apartment complex, which is only for the camera because a yep. normal common sense person would have just parked the truck right there. So you could just have one person offload instead of put like a, a whole team of people in a row. It's so dumb. Um, but the problem is, is that yes, People have been getting food now from the government, okay? But only people with local hukos. And a huko, as we've spoken about before, is kind of like a domestic passport. It, it um, dictates where you're from, so where you have your rights. So migrant workers, which are a huge portion of the population in any big city in China, have not been getting food. So here you've got one of these migrant workers up here and a lot of other migrant workers shouting, where is our food? Oh. 
You have to understand how frustrating that must be because your your own government doesn't acknowledge that you are worthy of receiving a food package simply because you came from out of town to work in a city and now the city's on lockdown. You're in there. You're not allowed to leave, but they're not going to give you food because you're not a local. Isn't that just ridiculous? It is. It's super, super hypocritical too. And what you'll see in response to this is um, they'll shut this down. Yeah. What they'll do is they'll shut down any of video. So if you send this, you try to spread this around on WeChat, mm. it'll get blocked out. Yeah. But then to what China will do is they'll do another one of those fake like displays and it'll be like local uh, police deliver eggs to migrant workers. Sure, they'll do right? something like that to hand it out just for to two, three people. Just like yeah. that black guy when they had that huge... Um, anti-black african dude that was my friend Guangzhou. yeah that was friend. my friend remember they gave him like three pieces of fruit like right. an old moldy apple and a banana if you're black you get some old fruit and then and, sometimes, an, and a fake flower and a fake flower <laughs> but if you got selected to go on the news for the campaign they'd take you shopping yes but actually they didn't pay for anything oh yeah they took the guys work. they said yeah. if you say good things about us we'll yeah. take you shopping so they said good things on the camera and then they took them to the shopping mall and said okay now you go shopping and Pay for everything yourself. Pay for it. We're going to film you and you're going to say we paid for yeah, it. Yeah, I know. They, the they local were like, government. No. Yeah. 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 It's ridiculous. So this is what happens. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anyway, so um, we just had to point out that everything is not rosy. Oh, no. Not at all. We just and, wanted to give a shout out to this guy. Oh, yeah. And again, this happened last week in Shenzhen. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. Now, you have to understand, okay, when we're talking about the problems in China, we are, of course, talking about the problems that are brought about by the government, okay? Yes. The way the government runs the place, the, the draconian setup, and society has been shaped in such a way that, unfortunately, the worst comes out in a lot of people because of the society. But everybody is not the same. And here we've got a very courageous man oh, what who a basically... Hero. You know Shenzhen was the first special economic zone yes. in China. Meaning it had a border. Yeah, I remember when I first moved to Shenzhen, the border was still there. You still had the border. Yeah, you still had the gates. And when you drove in and out, they'd check your passport, they'd check your ID card to make sure you had permission Because it was be. there was capitalism. Yeah, there. to be in Shenzhen. And if you didn't, they'd make you get off the bus. Yeah. Like that one time I, I left my passport at home, they wouldn't let me back in the city. Hmm. I had to go and get in a taxi and lie down in the back seat and drive through and they didn't spot me. It was like uh, Attack on Titan. Yeah, <laughs> it was. The walls. Yeah, it was. It was kind of crazy. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, Shenzhen was the start of this whole opening up of China. Yes. Okay. Deng Xiaoping's idea of liberalizing, opening up, allowing capitalism in, and that kind of thing. And that's what created China that we know today. Yeah. Well, it's wealth. Yes. I mean, that's what allowed China to grow. If Deng Xiaoping had not opened Shenzhen, China would still be a communist cutoff country yes. where people are starving. Yes. Okay. Correct. It would not have improved. No. Okay. No. People would still be driving around in 1950s Reform buses. Opening. Reform and opening. Yeah, reform and opening, That's what right? it's called. So a uh, local here in Shenzhen put out a big sign basically saying, down with Xi Jinping, because yeah. he's going against the whole reform and reform opening. And, opening. and reform and opening is the, like you said, the pillar um, policy mm. that invented new China. Yes. Really, I'm, I'm talking about I'm not talking about Mao's new China. I'm talking about modern China. Yes, you know about it today, and you're talking about it in the news because it's an actual powerhouse now because of reform and opening. Yes, and that's the only reason. Yes, otherwise it would have just been oh, a no. far flung country. No one knows. It would about. be like Lao. Yeah, or something. You wouldn't know. No about one would it. talk about yeah. it. It'd be like, oh, that that place with a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, that place that's like super communist. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Oh, ration it'd be tickets. Like, yeah, it'd be like North Korea. Yeah, North Korea. That's a good. So that's a good anyway. He put up his sign for, I don't know how long he had it up there, but again, this is Chinese society. Look, nobody does anything. By the way, people cheered when he got in trouble. Yeah. Some people. People called in the cops, obviously, and the yeah. cops came and uh, manhandled, manhandled him. And, and YouTube, don't take us down. There's no, like, police brutality here. I mean, they're, I mean, it's bad what they're doing, but they're not, like, killing him. They're not leaning on his neck <laughs> no, or something. No, that kind of stuff, no. Anyway, they... Um, take him to the ground and they handcuff him and or at least they detain him and take him away and um, that guy's dead well i mean whether or, he's dead or he's detained he's he's disappeared for now yes you're not gonna see him very courageous you're not man. Gonna see very him. courageous man i just gotta yeah. say for you to be able to say anything bad about the chinese government in public is I takes so much courage can can i just make a point here yeah please in china if you say something bad about the president, if you hold up a placard that says, um, it, it, he literally said Xi Jinping and he had like a, a no smoking yeah. strikeout over Xi. 
you put that out there, you get arrested. You it get disappeared. Yeah, you get taken down by you how many? Court. How many police do they have there? One, two, three, four, five, six, six he policemen. Doesn't, he doesn't get a slap on the wrist. Yeah, with riot shields. Okay, that's what happens to you. So every single piece of shit liberal person who tells me that America is bad can go f themselves because think about it. You can hold up a sign that says "fuck Trump." Or you can hold up a sign that says down with Biden or, you know, whatever, demon rats or, you know, whatever, like <laughs> whatever crap you want to say. You can hold up a sign here and you will not have six armed policemen that will for force you down onto the ground, arrest you and take you away because that guy did nothing. Right. There's no violent mm -hmm. protest. He didn't set anything on fire. Right. OK, he didn't go smash businesses, nope. which you see in protests here and stuff. He didn't throw objects at the police or at people or anything like that he didn't do anything but hold up a sign right okay now in america you can hold up a sign all day long and it can be the most offensive thing you want it could be about abortion it can be about the government it could be about anything but you will not have six riot shield police come and arrest you and take you away no forever <laughs> potentially yeah. yeah and it shows you how crappy and the lack of actual freedom of expression china has is this what's yeah, happening I, right it bothers here? me that people look to china as an example yeah and and honestly i gotta i gotta say it's on again unfortunately on both sides of the extreme right and left yeah is china is an example for both the left and the right for different reasons yeah the extreme right will say china based because they there's they said no sissy boys and they don't <laughs> like gay people right yeah. go china you have the extreme left well, that's guess like what? they don't socialism. like guns either right they don't, yeah exactly they don't like freedom of speech either exactly so china not based <laughs> no and then you have the extreme left that's like oh china socialists and they care about workers rights and they have free health care again no, they none don't. of those things are true you pay for your health care um you don't get social programs so unite right and left no matter what your race I believe you can reunite under the fact that you're, China is the actual opposite of what you want. If yeah. you're right or left, China is not in a poster child of almost anything, of yeah. almost any principle that you stand for. Yeah. If you're progressive and you're progressive left, if, you, if you're if talking about trans, gay rights, all that kind of stuff, then China is absolutely your antithesis. That is your devil yeah. country. That yeah. is your Satan. Yeah. If, you're, if you're a right, if, you talk, if, you, if you're talking about the uh, constitution, if you're a constitutionalist, yeah. You really care about um, right to bear arms, all this kind of stuff, right? Sure. China is not your, it's your antithesis <laughs> no. country as well. Yeah. The government is not standing up for people's rights in China. You can't even own land in China. You can't own land. Come so on, guys. Stop using China as the example. Yeah. You cannot hold up a sign that says, I don't like the president. Yes. You literally probably are dead yeah. if you do that. Yeah. I mean, look at what this guy did. There you can see his crime is holding up that sign. Yes. There you can see what happened to him. And you may never see this man ever again. Yes. Kick you know? out Xi Jinping. Da da. Yeah, kick out Xi Jinping. That's what he said. And okay, Shenzhen is the most kind of liberal, I mean, other than yeah. Shanghai. No, definitely. Yeah, you know, city. Second, I would say. Yeah, it's a second. This, this is where all the new ideas have been tested. It's okay? more progressive it's, than the rest of the country. It's right across the border from Hong Kong. It's sure. had a lot of influence from the international community. Okay, That's where I lived for 14 years. I love that city. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And as far as Chinese cities go, it has always been my favorite. That's why I lived there for so long. But it's, it's the kind of place where if anyone could get away with something like this, it would be in Shenzhen. Yeah, if there, were, if there was one place that maybe it would kind of slide. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But guess what? It yeah, doesn't. It no, no I, I mean, it, this kind of thing never would. But that's it. Criticize the president on a sign. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't even say like, F Xi Jinping. Yeah, yeah, he just yeah. said, Kick out, him out. Yeah. Out, out with, with Xi Jinping. Out with him. Out yes. with the king. <laughs> out with Xi Jinping. And this is what happens. Riot shield police came and kicked his ass. Right. You know what I mean? And it says, yeah, it says uh, support for form and opening. Yeah. So like very basic stuff even within the chinese constitution this guy's yeah. not even anti-china no or anti-ccp he's no. not even anti-ccp i should say yeah this guy is potentially for the ccp sure um you know like a lot of the uh what's it called the tiananmen square protesters didn't even ask for a full step down of the of the chinese government yeah it was to expand rights and freedom yeah. of speech they respond this is like a mini Tiananmen Square. You know how they respond? They respond with utmost brutality. And let yeah. this be a little example. I'm glad this is caught on film. Yeah. This is what happens nationwide whenever there's the slightest hint of dissent. Yeah. And that is not okay. 
No. China is not a poster child for this kind so of So anyone who defends the, the Communist Party regime and who defends them, realize and think, just think to yourself, what if you had a gripe? Right. What if the government... And think about your own government, okay? There's something that you don't like about your government, presumably. I'm pretty sure if you're trying yeah, to support China, sure. there's something you yes. don't like about your, yes. your government. That's what I see on both sides. Yeah. Imagine if you wanted to air your grievances about your own government, but you couldn't. Do you think the Chinese government is perfect? Do you think that if you go to live in China or if you were Chinese, that you would find not a single fault with the government? Because I'm sure you would. I mean, there are plenty of faults with every government. But here's the thing. You're living in China and you find something that you really don't like and you try to express your grievance like this man. What happens to you? You're silenced. And that's why you should not support China for Correct. that reason. Yes. If you support liberal democracy, as I think most of us should, mm -hmm. um, China can never be a poster child for this I stuff. Yeah, I support democracy, liberal or not. Yeah, liberal democracy. <laughs> you know what liberal matter. democracy is? I right? do. I support a conservative <laughs> democracy too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mm. <laughs> let's vote. <laughs> All right, so oh, anyway, we just had to get that out. It's a very important um, uh, message and it's a very important thing for everybody to see. Correct. Um, and now we'll take a couple of super chats before we sure. move into our next segment. Yes. Uh, free speech respecter wants us, I think, assuming he wants us to say, Bo 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 go haram. Bo go haram. Bo go haram. It's not. We're not supporting Bo go haram. No, we're not. We're just making fun of. We're just. It's really. No idea what that was. Yeah. It was just really sad that the Beach Boys had to support such a. I'm just joking. Um, yeah. it's Daki Masu my first donation hope this helps I love your streams thanks well, thank, thank you very, you very much, much. appreciate that yeah JHS is speak, speaking of globes both Lithuania and Japan are developing their own versions of global uh, Magnitsky, Magnitsky Act to spe specifically address the CCP really that's interesting Madhur Gupta says uh, I thought Chinese globe is flat with a middle kingdom in, at the middle of it uh, that's a map not a globe. <laughs> yeah. but yeah that's hilarious how yeah. that's portrayed yeah it is um Niall well all King. countries do that yeah that's true that's nothing yeah. crazy mm -hmm. uh keep up the amazing oh, but work. You, you know something tri a bit of trivia when you open wechat you know it's got a globe yes africa's in the middle yeah you know why why because Nas naspers which is a south african company was the biggest shareholder of tencent oh interesting haven't they changed that logo no they changed it but they changed it back oh they changed it back yeah and that's um even right now yeah, I mean, open up WeChat. Okay. Open up WeChat and see. Right. Well, see what's easy. in the middle. Yeah, you we don't keep it. this on our personal phones. Oh, you don't have, yeah. Yeah, if we, we use WeChat, we've got burner phones. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people might think that's crazy, but you have to do that yeah. with WeChat. Yeah, so anyway, the fact of the matter is... Um, yeah, uh, it looks like China's in the middle, dude. Oh, is China in the middle now? Yeah. Oh, they changed that? When did they change that? Maybe they, like, bought out the the thing. Boko Haram. Take a look. No, it's still Africa. This is probably the old one, though. It looked a little different. It flashed on and off, like, really quickly. Look, because this one's China. Um, that one is. But yeah. I know they changed it, and then they changed it back. Yeah, maybe they did. It flashed anyway, on Anyway, the fact of the matter is um, uh, Tencent, which makes WeChat, um, is uh, was heavily invested in by a South African Interesting. company. Yeah, that's cool. Cool little fact. Yeah, a little um, uh, factoid. It's not a factoid, a cool little fact. Yeah, factoid, remember, is something that's not I'm real. I'm opening up WeChat now. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I want to double that's check. That's something, that burner phone's super Yeah, slow. Africa's still in the middle. I don't, yeah. yeah, I won't yeah, show anyone. No, I believe you. Africa's still in the, middle. the middle. Isn't that weird? Middle, yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I wonder how many Chinese people are happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> people are laughing, lol, burner phones. We have a few burner phones that we use for CCP stuff. Yeah, look. Uh, because you cannot have Chinese apps. If we look at Weibo, we got to have it on there. Mm -hmm. If we have WeChat, got to have it on there. Any no, Chinese look, app. Without being tinfoil hat or No, anything, no, it's necessary. When, when you install WeChat on your phone, it demands permission to your microphone, yep. to your location, to your camera, to everything. It demands that and it won't run without it. So yep. you're not going to put that on our main phones we take everywhere, okay? Let's yes. put it that way. We're just we're too high profile, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, says, yeah, yeah, I'll do another one. Keep mm -hmm. up the amazing work. We grew up in China and lived there for 12 years after until returning to Canada for uni two years ago. Really enjoy the depth of knowledge you guys bring to the table. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Very much appreciate that. Uh, Average Jar, remember you? Can I get a great, please? Oh, yeah, of course you can get a great. Great. 
You're pretty great yourself. David Gomko, yeah. uh, just have a beer on me and cotton. Great. Oh, there's no. Oh, there's no more cotton. cotton. But you know what I've got? You know. He said, oh, oh and ball, ball, what is that? Oh, oh, okay. But wait, before we do that, yeah. I removed the cotton thing and I know. That's bloody outrageous. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's bloody outrageous. Um, and yes, of course you can get out. All right, good. Now yeah, we're going to move on to Wumao Corner, which is where we talk about haters and uh, the ridiculous stuff. But this time around, we actually have a very intriguing story to share with you. Okay? And this is a story about snail noodles. Rem- Daddy Powder Snail. Rem- yeah. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy Powder Snail King or something, wasn't yeah. it? It was something Gruel. like that. Gruel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daddy Powder Snail Gruel. There is a restaurant um, in Shenzhen. Yeah, right near where you see Their live. English name was yeah. Daddy Powder Snail Gruel. <laughs> yes. King. <laughs> We've got a picture of it somewhere. Yeah. We have to find it. Yeah. Daddy Power Snail. Powder. Yeah. Daddy Powder Snail Gruel like King. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, a lorsifin is. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's just jumped up in popularity over the past couple of years. Have you noticed? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Lita Chi, her biggest selling uh, brand is a Lorsifin thing. Yeah. Um, that that whole, um, she's too Chinese looking to be, to represent China thing I did like a couple of weeks ago. She was promoting um, the three squirrels Lorsifin stuff. Let me explain what it is. Yeah. Since I eat it quite often. Yeah. You, you love snail noodles. It's, they're pretty good. Snail um, powder. So basically it's a dish from Guangxi. And it's uh, it's made with snails, right? Mm-hmm. River snails. Yeah. And they grind them up basically yeah. to make like a powder. It sounds gross, but it's yeah. it's just a it's like a s- sour spicy soup with noodles in it. Yeah, even I, I hate the idea of eating snails, but I but even think good. it tastes good. Fine. You know what I really hate is when you're in Guangdong and you get those little black snails. They've got like it's thousands like a bar of them food. in it, and they're like they're so hard sucking, to suck out. Sucking this, oh, and I can't, I can't, I don't Not eat really. that. I, I eat just, it, but oh, it's very no. annoying. It's like dirt in there, you know. It's a little dirty. It's like. But there's, it's, they're so small and they're insignificant. They're so small. That's the so, problem I have. Yeah. I don't mind snails. I eat I mean, snails. But... I'd rather eat guadza at that point. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like guadza. You get more nutrition. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, there's sorry. this dish from, some, from Guangxi, Guangxi. And Guangxi is a you know, southern province. And it became famous for this lorsifen, which yeah. is snail noodles. Now, S- snail powder noodles. Snail yeah. powder noodles. So anyway... Yeah. Um, the thing is, it became a uh, worldwide phenomenon amongst the diaspora in China yes. as well. My wife gets it all the time. Your mm-hmm. wife gets it all yeah, the time. My, my I wife loves it, yeah, my I ate it the other day. Yeah. It's a worldwide phenomenon right now, and it's it's good. Yeah. I like Lausifen. It tastes better than Guilin Mi Fen to me. Yeah, Guilin Mi Fen's a bit more bland. It's super bland. But anyway, mm. long story short, the uh, NPR journalist yeah. wanted to go see what the hype was about, right? Yes. I like NPR, actually. I, I listen to NPR. It's, very, it's quite bland. What does it stand for? National Public Radio. Okay. So it's quite bland, but they do good journalism. They're very factual. Okay. Right? So they do these human, uh, human stories sometimes, human interest stories, and they send out their journalists. Now, this journalist, um, I'm going to pull up, pull up uh, her Emily article. Zhang. Emily Zhang, yeah. Oh, you have her here, yeah. yeah. Uh, Emily Fung. Her name oh, is. It, oh, Fung. Why did it say John? Oh, sorry, because it's Emily Z. Fung, and I just read it like in the corner of my eyes. No so worries, no worries. Emily Fung. So Fung Leba. Yeah. <laughs> so she's not Fung. She no. does good work. So she yeah. went. She wanted to see what the hype was about. Yeah. So she goes to Guangxi to see what the the source of the the snail noodles are. Sure. Now they're famous for being pretty smelly. Right, because they're, I mean, it's made of snails, right? Sure. Snail powder. It's like snail fer- powder. It's fermented, right? Yeah, fermented snail powder. It so, sounds terrible. It, it, but it tastes good. Yeah, it tastes good. It does good. taste good. It's I, very savory. I'll, I'll agree with you. It tastes very good. very sour, right? Vinegary. I hate the idea of it, but I still it's, think it tastes it's good. good. Yeah. yeah. So she wanted to go see that, and people in China says, oh, it smells bad, but it tastes good. Typical, yeah. it's like kimchi, right? Like smells chou bad. tofu. Yeah, or chou tofu, or smelly tofu, stinky yeah. tofu, which, which I ate the other day. I ate the other day. The Taiwanese kind is the best. Yeah. Um. So she wants to go there and do it. Isn't so, it illegal to carry it in an elevator or something in yeah, Taiwan? something like that. You're not allowed yeah. to take it in an elevator? You can, and it's you like can't a, have durian as well. Yeah, in yeah. elevators. They're like, you may not. Yeah. And yeah, you have to go up the stairs. If you, you have to have go up it. the stairs, yeah. yeah. Which I get. It yeah, smells I'm, horrendous. I'm glad. It like shit. Yeah, it, it does. It tastes, it, great, it tastes great, though. Yeah, stinky tofu. Uh, yeah. So anyway, mm. she wants to go here to see the uh, the origin of smelly noodles, basically. Right. We call them, a lot of people call it stinky noodles. Stinky that's noodles, like a yeah. thing. Yeah, that's my really, wife calls it stinky yeah, noodles. Yeah, that's, that's a thing. Do you want to have some stinky noodles? Yeah, my wife as well. It's kind of a colloquial thing. There's no hate there. No. It's what Chinese people call it. And they stink. And they stink bad. Yeah. And people are like, oh, I got to open the window, you know, and eat in stinky noodles or lorsifen. Yeah. So she goes there and she writes a very 
very nice article about it, right? Yeah. She goes and writes this article, and um, I, I recommend you guys check it out. It's incredibly fair. There is yeah. nothing weird or offensive about the article at all. It's factual. It's talking about the craze of stinky noodles. She yeah. doesn't say it's gross. Nope. She doesn't say anything bad about it. But when she was there, it says the story is... You can, you can read it. Okay, I'll read this. <clears throat> so this is her tweet. There's a couple of tweets we're going to go through here because it's probably best you just hear what she had to say. Sure. She said, this story has generated vitriolic backlash in China and reporting it turned out to be more difficult than I imagined. Um, okay, so she says, last year we lined up interviews with factories and government noodle officials. Yes, they exist. Because, yeah, government noodle officials do exist. You have to have an official for everything. Don't forget, there are a lot of people in China, so they need to generate jobs, right? Yeah. Um, so she says, the entire... The entirely private factories told us later they in fact needed provincial propaganda department approval to do an interview. Here we go. By the way, remember these shills that go around and do things and say, oh, we're not connected to the government. Seriously. <clears throat> this is great, great evidence for this, by the way. Something yeah. we already knew, but it's nice to see someone other than Remember us. the whole vegetable dance thing? It's with... all through the propaganda department. If yeah. you see any of these foreign YouTubers in China doing this stuff, it is put on by the Chinese propaganda department. Yeah, that's right. It I is. Mean, yeah. Floppy hat vegetable lord yep. and all those people doing their thing, trying to deny it's connected to the government. Come on, guys. We're smarter than that. Maybe you aren't. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so the entirely private factories told us later they in fact needed provincial propaganda department approval to do any interview. This is not true. China's own laws from its state council say foreign journalists merely need interviewee consent. And then she links like a, she cites, has a citation for that. Soon... Guanxi propaganda officials called me and offered to accompany us on a snail noodle tour. I politely declined. Within literally an hour, every single factory and government official who'd agreed to an interview had cancelled on us. Sadly, this is the norm these days. So, I mean, do you understand, if you're not accompanied by a government official, they're not going to allow it to happen. Right. Which is what happens with these shills. Uh, we can tell briefly... This is story is so uh, mirrors our story oh, so yeah. so much when we film stuff. But anyway, yeah. keep going. So you know you need to have a government minder basically to make sure that you don't report the wrong thing or say the wrong thing. You see, and so as soon as she said, "No, that's okay. I just want to go by myself," the government forced all the different people that had agreed to do an interview to cancel the interview. Okay, so she said, <clears throat> "We were not de deterred. After all, I love snail noodles." As do we. Mm. So I went to Guangxi with NPR World, and had a great time and talked to lovely people. As it usually is. Yes. Here's how some Chinese outlets re reacted. Anti-China foreign citizen of China's, Chinese descent infiltrates Guangxi. <laughs> okay. That's an official article <laughs> yes. on uh, si uh, Sina.com. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> In other words, they put out all these articles saying that she's this anti-Chinese foreign citizen of Chinese descent. I'll, re I'll read through the article after you finish yeah, the tweet. Okay, the anti chinese yeah, yeah, we've got to hear this. By the way, have you noticed how um, when there's a Chinese person, like, what's the snowboarder? Okay, what's this that? is... This oh, I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay, we'll talk news. about it. But when there's a, a, an American or an Eileen Australian Gu. Chinese person who's doing something that China Likes. Uh, wants to use, yeah. use for themselves, suddenly they're Chinese. Yeah. Even if they don't even, even if they weren't born in China, even if they don't have any kind of Chinese passport or anything. But this Chinese uh, American, okay, is suddenly an anti-China foreign citizen of Chinese descent, okay? Yeah. See how they, they, yeah. they make them foreigners now? Yes. Okay, yes. when it suits them. Only when it suits them. Only when it suits them, okay. So she says, actually, I take that back. We had a great time in Guangxi, except for the police checks at 1 a.m. every night from unmasked officers for COVID control, plain clothes following us, filming us, and at one point effectively locking one of our interviewees in his office. This is something we're very familiar with. Not only for our film, but when I was in Guangxi filming the Yulin Dog Meat Festival, I had literally had spy ass plain clothes officers following me everywhere yeah making sure we didn't do anything they, they cock blocked us from every single thing in the whole city yeah and this is what happens they get super paranoid when you're not even doing anything wrong i know you know you yeah. could be there to tell a good story which like we were was. for and we were for conquering northern china we only wanted to show the best it was most only positive, positive things about china but they, they tried kicked, to shut us they down. basically they made us ultimately leave china 
Yeah. Because they showed the true colors of what they think about you. Yeah. You're like, hey, this this restaurant's great. I'm really enjoying this food. Then somebody, the chef overhears you and is like, oh, yeah? Oh, and yeah? comes and dumps cockroaches in your plate. Yes. That's pretty much That's what it is. Yeah. And it's like, dude, well, fuck you. Then. Yeah, exactly. All right. So yeah. anyway, she goes on. She says, anywho, today there are numerous state pieces, including from the Guangzhou Provincial Daily, on my apparent hatred for Chinese food and a nefarious plot to smear China through snail noodles. All right, which is ridiculous, because once again, so all the, the media, including the big media, like the Guangzhou Provincial Daily, which is a big uh, outlet, are saying that she's trying to smear China through uh, snail news. Yeah, she finishes it off by saying, like, it was a fun story. And let me read you, I want to read you what the article, yeah. this is the state media so article. Th this is a state media article, okay. It says, anti-Chinese Chinese, Yeah. right, infiltrated Guangxi China, grave digging, yin yang strange snail powder, and someone spoke for her. That's a bad translation. What that means is like a Chinese person that mm -hmm. actually is American. Yeah, so not actually really Chinese. Right. Yeah. Just, just that hates China. Sense. Yeah. That's like Hei Zhongguo, basically. Yeah, yeah. Came and infiltrated Guangxi to like cause shit. Yeah. To stir up shit, right? Yeah. It says, recently the anti-China China media seem to have to rack their brains and can't find any material to make China look bad. Yeah. <laughs> And they actually regard snail powder, like snail noodles, yes. well, so fun, as like uh, uh, media or as a type of a good uh, story, way, a good, a good way, way to, to make, make China, China look, look bad. bad. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what they said. They basically said, yeah, they had to find. They ran out of stuff to to make China look bad. So they found that snail noodles that are so popular. Yeah, this is something they stooped to that level. Yeah. That's basically the language that they're saying. Right. Um, for many people, they say that like uh, lorsofen, this kind of noodle, smells bad but tastes good, just like durian. Right? Yeah. Um, therefore, although some people can't accept it, right? They can't. They can't handle it. There's still lots of loyal fans. Of, of course, this, right? So that's basically what she's saying in her article. Yeah. Right? This is actually the article. Yeah. Um, oh, this is the anti. Yeah. yeah I'm, this is, I'm this, trying to this translate is, this on this the fly. The, yeah. This is the article that we're talking. Uh, about. So it says like. It says her name in Chinese, by, by the way, because they want this is what they do when they want to make an enemy out of a Chinese person that's a traitor. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, she's she's supposed to be on our side about this. Yeah. But she's not even writing anything against snail yeah. noodles. That's the thing. She was she's supporting it. Yeah. And she had a great time yeah. talking to the locals. It's exactly the same thing happened. It always gets spoiled by the government. We have a great yeah. time with the locals, have some drinks, food, make lifelong friends. Yeah. And then the local P a PSB will show up and be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. What are you doing here? And we're like, what the hell? Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So it says, um, she says, uh, in her description of the noodles, she said, it's mostly fermented and the snail noodles are the worst of them all. <laughs> okay. At the beginning of the article, the reporter says that lots of people that want to find crazy and weird or like unpleasant and things, ridiculous, and ridiculous things, things to, to eat. eat. Yeah. So she's saying, or their state media is saying that she is saying that only crazy like people that try to be adventurous and find yeah. bad shit to eat. Yeah, yeah, That's would what have she's this, saying. Yeah. Then she uh, described the smell of of the the what's it called the noodles, losofen, mm -hmm. as s smelly bamboo. That's with been the, fermented. With a stench. Yeah, with a stench of smelly bamboo that's been fermented for weeks. Yeah. Um, and the um, the source of the snail powder is linked to fossils that they found in. Oh yeah, it's in Liuzhou. Yeah. yeah. Um, Twenty five thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, they basically accuse her of playing word games yeah. to make the snail p powder noodles seem so disgusting. Yeah. Then they say, let's take a look at uh, her masterpiece together. Right. By the way, this is state media. When I say state media, I think it's it's just approved by the state. It's not yeah, necessarily course. written by the state. Um, well, there the, the were a state media like the Guangzhou, um, you know, the Guangzhou Provincial Daily. That is proper state Oh, media. you're right. No, there was state yeah. media involved. I apologize. I'm trying. This is just like... I'm a, like running defense to the CCP. No, here. you can't. This, no. this is all 100% the state is just running defense. Because here's the thing. I believe they thought that she was going to go there to write something bad because she did not that, want the government. I, I want to get into that in a second. Yeah. So uh, they go on to say like, um, there's lot tens of millions of fans that blog about this disgustingly de delicious snack, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what she means is that Chinese people really like this disgusting stuff. Yeah, Chinese oh, people like disgusting what? things. Are you calling your own dish disgusting, basically? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if they're going to paint her as a Chinese person. Oh, I mean, right, yeah, they're saying the way they're saying. Th that's yeah. what they're saying. Yeah. Anyway. Um, 
she the, she quoted a local by saying, "I eat snail noodles like uh, once every day, and the taste is really good for it's a, it's husha, how do you say what? like uh, suitable right. suitable for Guangxi people right only yeah um, it's sour and spicy. Once you get used to it, you don't notice like the offensive smell mm-hmm. anymore. Um, so they go on and they basically go about how excuse me, they, they link this to how foreign media was talking about how Chinese people eat bats. They somehow link it to that, which is not mentioned in her article at all. No, of course not. Um, and then they go on to talk about racism and the pandemic and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. And then so they, they go, say that she's a well-known she's a, anti-China professional. Yeah, that's like what she's good at is like to slander China. That's what China. they say about us. Yeah, it's the same. Mm. You get painted with this brush even if you're a fair journalist i mean she literally did a, a a thing about food about a specific food and how much Pro- she enjoyed promoting it, it. Yeah. <laughs> so they go on and they talk about um blah, blah blah anyway long story short it's a huge smear article against her and they keep putting these pictures of her uh in there and i wanted to read some of the comments okay you got okay. some comments okay uh, again this is tough i have to like on the fly translate this it says um people like her betray or sorry forget their ancestors and they betray their country and they've lost any sense of shame keep in mind this is an article promoting snail noodles yes about how much she likes them even though that some people think they're stinky yes as long as you're an american um you can uh you can insult her casually mm-hmm. it it is estimated that this rubbish woman yeah la, la yeah, yeah will not um resist and will be particularly cooperative no basically what they're saying is that yeah. you can just undress her and do what you want because she's a piece of because trash. she's a piece of she's trash. a slut right. she's a slut that's that's they the do, proper they translation tend to, of that they tend to do that they always do that whenever there's a woman that's at the you know the ire somehow stokes the ire of the nationalists right they will go after her as a woman yes you know yes. and call her like a they did that with Vicky Shu and all yeah, these other people. Yeah. They call them sluts and promiscuous right. and all this. They did that with those freaking Uyghur women that women, were, yeah, were like, oh my victims. God, we've been raped. They're like, no, they're just like sleep around sluts. You know what I mean? Isn't After that they just... put Chinese Han Chinese men in their home and yeah. force them to have sex with them. Yeah, yeah. No, they're just sluts, according yeah. to Chinese media. Um, this person says, actually a sad person. <laughs> this person says, the this uh, like uh, problem is developed by ugly people. Okay, they're they're calling, her ugly, calling her ugly. Yeah. Um, this person says, "Fuck! How can this fake foreign bitch be even speak Ren human Hua? words? Like, human yeah, words. Yeah, like like Ren, Ren Hua is, is Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say <laughs> you get that sometimes. They say Shua Ren Hua. Ren Hua. If me it's and like, the Winston were like we're walking down the street, and we're talking, some nationalist will be like Shua Ren Hua. Yeah, if we're talking in English, it very seldom happens. That means but, speak human. Yeah, it's like speak Chinese. Yeah, Ren Hua means people language. Yeah, speak Ren Hua. <laughs> we sometimes we say that. Now, yeah, I know we do, but not against Chinese. We yeah. say it like because we, we want to switch to Chinese. Yeah, we call exactly. It Ren Hua as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Guangxi running dog. <laughs> they love this dog thing. Uh, yeah. Running dog. I yes. love this. Yeah, running dog. Um, why? And this person says, "Why are people like this not arrested?" Yes. Why are they not arrested? Yeah. I oh. mean, this is like absolutely insane. Yeah. And really, I I have to stress, like, you have to understand how nice this article is in NPR. Yeah. And she doesn't even go back to like address this bullshit that she had to go through. Yeah. She's very diplomatic about this. So props to her. I mean, I feel super bad. But again, it's something we've run into so many times. See how insecure China is? Yeah. I mean, the Chinese government and the, and Chinese people, if you look at the comments. So I have a theory. Yeah. And again, I think you touched on this. Mm. Tell me if you agree. I think this this smear against her. Oh, I'm speaking English over here. Yeah. This smear campaign against her, yeah. I actually think might have been preemptive. Coming mm. out of like uh, the, the preemptive paranoia that when she was there. Yeah. So they're like, oh, this woman's going to make this article. Yeah. We can't do anything about it because she's like got kind of, I don't know if it's diplomatic community or whatever, well, she's, but she's like a she's a journalist. She's yeah. allowed to go talk about this, but. And, and it's not a government thing. So no. if it was a government thing, they could stop oh, they could her. do whatever they, they want. They do whatever. But yeah. she's literally wants to go and um, interview companies. restaurants yeah. and factories that make noodles. Right. 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 That's what she yeah. wants. Yeah. So yeah, when they when they said okay, let's we will accompany you, you know, just like they accompany the shills to go dance with vegetables or whatever, yeah. we'll take you to meet the right people. You're going to meet and talk to this guy specifically right. because Which that's is what in they our always interest. Try to yeah. do. 
So that's what they tried to do. And she's like, no, it's okay. She's Chinese, remember? She can speak the language perfectly. She can do whatever she wants, okay? She looks yeah. the same. She doesn't stand out like a, a, a big dumb foreigner. So, right. you know? Like a blonde, she can, tall guy. Yeah, she can go do what she wants. So then they're like, hang on a second. If she's not going to be uh, led around by us, then she's probably got an ulterior motive. So we better, like, you whip know, this up yeah, in defense. Make sure that we. So now take she's care of enemy of the state. Yeah. For God's sakes. For making a, a, an article about how she enjoys these noodles. It's ridiculous. And yeah. again, it's not that ridiculous because we saw this, and this is under Xi Jinping. Yeah. Uh, we saw this deteriorate. You can have the greatest intentions, even go just go to meet a friend who knows someone. Yeah. Oh, a friend has a ranch or something. Yeah. A friend knows a Mongolian guy that'll, that wants to talk to you and like he can hang out and do horse stuff with him. Yeah. Nope. Because it wasn't run by the state and the PLA shows up, yeah. takes apart all your gear, yells at you, takes your photos, and then comes back and keeps harassing you throughout sure. your trip, even though you went to go freaking milk a horse. Yeah, exactly. Now that sounds bad. But literally, we went to go... Remember how pissed off that guy was? Because yes. like, there's this Mongolian guy. He's a pretty big guy. He's got this big knife yeah. and everything, and he's milking a horse. Yeah. And it literally looks like he's jerking the horse sure. off, okay? And there's white stuff coming out. So we had a bit of a giggle. And yeah. he turned around. And he was like, was real what mad. the hell are you laughing at? We, you we, know what we I mean? We're like, that. nothing, no, nothing. No. He's a cool he guy, could, He was a great guy. But you could tell he was about to kick our asses. You know what I mean? <laughs> he would kick yeah, our yeah, asses. Yeah, totally. Dude. Anyway, yeah. Um, you you got to see how stupid and insecure they are. China would have such good PR with the rest of the world. Oh, my gosh. And if we they would have just, kept going doing it, too. Yeah, if they would just stop being such assholes. Stop. Calm down. Not yeah. everyone's out to get you. And you know what happens, though, is that people end up getting inspired to talk about the bad stuff. Because yeah. it is getting way worse. Yeah. And we, honestly, I we wouldn't have self-censored forever yeah. because of the morality involved with that. But, like, when we're going around doing motorcycle trips and we're actually just... We don't want anything to do with the government. Sure. We just want to make friends. Yeah. We want to talk to people, eat food, hang out. And that's what we did. And show and the, the positive greatest, sides of China. And we Greatest were. times in our life. They literally had to beat that out of us. They yeah. Had to, they had to make us hate it. Yeah. Not the had, people. Yeah, they had to the experience. Take, take that experience of us trying to share the good parts about China and, and punish us for that. Over and over again until we said, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, well, you want Loves you want off. us to talk about the the, sh the, the shit bad part? stuff. It's time now. Yeah, because that's what you expect from us anyway, right? Yeah. Anyway, there there you can see a picture of um, Emily Emily Fung, and um, this was in the article, and then the comments were, of course, underneath this article, just saying how disgusting she is and what a yeah. Slut I apologize for my sloppy and, translation. I know, should have done it prior to this, but yeah. Um, the fact of the matter is, it's just disgusting behavior, and it just shows you that when you try to play nice with the Communist Party of China, with Communist China, you get slapped in the face. Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. That's Wu Mao Corner for you. Yeah. It's so paranoid right now. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Wait, we've got, a, we've got some of the, These are some of the comments oh, we were yeah. translating nice. earlier. So for those of you who can read and write Chinese, you can see the kind of stuff that's being written there. Right. Um, by the way, if you see MD, it means mother. It means like fuck. Yeah, basically. And... Or sh NMS yeah, NMSL Nimasala means your mother's. <laughs> I think everyone knows kill that your one. mother. You know, yeah. you, I hope your mother dies as Nimasala. You see that a lot. Mm. We call it Nimasalese if somebody speaks. You know, is is basically swearing. You know. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to take a couple of super chats and we'll move on to worldview. What do you say? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Uh, Ross Wolf says, "Could Xi Jinping thought be translated to that's what she said? That would be funny." Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, this guy S10 says, "Enjoy some beers, lads. Keep thanks for you keeping us." You didn't seem very um, enthusiastic about that, by the way. What? That's what she said. <laughs> it's because I. You said probably it so heard times, enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not getting done on you. It's just yeah. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Uh, thanks for keeping us informed, and entertained, having whiskey myself. Uh, get it from. If you can get it in the states, try Farmer's Blonde Beer. Okay. Logo app. My cousin says, I don't know if Canada is capitulated. If Canada capitulated, because recently the government was discussing countries around China. They called it Indo-Pacific. Lol. No. And again, Canada's been pretty good. It's just like they have done. Like they literally entertained and, and had a uh, international meeting about an extradition treaty with China. It didn't pass. But that's yeah. that's crazy. And Trudeau's not being very good at standing up to Xi Jinping. No. And he's actually. Um, complimented the way china runs yeah and so on so so to see a shift in that, that canada has also fickle. allowed all the corrupt 
people from China sure. to come and launder money and drive up the real estate sure. prices and use casinos like with duffel bags, officials. duffel bags full of money and stuff CCP and turned officials. a blind eye yeah. to this stuff. Canada has been very complicit in helping Chinese corruption. I'll tell you that much. Sure. Meng Wanzhou ring a bell? But when he, well, I should say he, when his cabinet or whatever, when the law, when things change, yeah. China freaks out because they're like, we have this in the bag. What's happened? And like, now you're the worst country in the world yeah. now. I like, you know, how this whole Meng Wanzhou thing and she gets she, she gets freed back to China. But meanwhile, she still owns mansions and all of her yeah. family, her daughters and stuff still yeah. live in yeah. Canada. Yeah. Isn't that just a little, it's like, oh my God, I'm such a refugee. Oh, right. I just escaped right. this terrible place. Where I was by the way, in my mansion. Yeah, Go by the shopping. way, I still own all this property and all of my family still lives there. So right. it can't be that bad, can it? No. <laughs> just saying. No. Yeah. Legal anyway. Eagle saw some protests briefly on WeChat. Guess they're being censored. You betcha. Oh, yes. Dan Ketsatori. Wow. Thank you very much. Incredibly, That's awesome. Incredibly generous. Thank you. Here's some funding for non compliant revolving globes without the nine dash lines. We'll Thank get that you. started. I, I'm actually going to see if it's even possible to get a globe these days without that on it. It's got to be somewhere else that makes them, right? You might have to. Oh, start... no, no. No, most globes don't have nine dash lines. No, dude. I mean, That's... like new ones. Brand, brand new ones. Yeah, I mean, that don't have like the same color for Taiwan. Yeah, maybe. that, that, yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking like. I'm gonna look and see if it, for that. I'm gonna see if it's possible, and if it is possible, if it's not possible, I'm gonna have to buy an antique globe. Yeah, I might buy an antique USSR. globe that rarely pisses them off. That says yeah. it's like Manchuria or Manchuria. something. Manchuria. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Manchuka. Yeah, I think I'll buy that. And use that in our <laughs> videos. This is China right here on the map. <laughs> yes. Yeah, anyway, Koala 1203. She suck. Insert word here. <laughs> okay. Anyways, here's some free 2022 ADVs. China's tax money. Thank you. Appreciate what? that. Thank you. What for, does that mean? Thank you for reminding yeah, they, us. It's, it's all this tax, tax season. season junk. Oh, I hate tax. So do I. It sucks. Mm. But I always have to do it. Uh, Kuyamora means good morning. Oh, okay. Uh, good morning. For, this is from Ignacio Marquez. Uh, good morning from Southampton, UK. Just to let you know, all the flat earthers just left the room, lol. Okay. That's yeah. true. I can't believe that is a thing. Yeah, we so learned about it in, uh, in uh, what's it called? Uh, Earth science. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a joke. I mean, like There's a fringe group. And now like it's a real thing. No, look, people need their weird beliefs. Yeah. You can't, like, there, sure. there's whatever floats your boat, you know, as they say. I can't get on board with that. I can't respect that. <laughs> no, There's I mean, no respect. it's not about respect. It's just like creationists or whatever. You know, you just yeah, don't, like don't dinosaur even, bones were don't, planted don't by Satan to, to test that. your faith or whatever. <laughs> Look, you just have to. Yeah. Hey, if someone believes something, they believe it. You know. If, yeah. No, I I, res I just don't respect their belief. <laughs> yeah. No, I know you could think it's dumb, but yes. at the same time, they can. They can. Don't have challenge that. it. No it's not there's uh -huh. no need no there's no need especially at that gonna, level there's no you're not going to change anyone's no, mind as no. far as that's concerned you're just not yeah just i mean not. you can fly them into space and they'll say you've put a hologram in front of them yeah okay yeah it's just or you, you are satan tempting them <laughs> yeah by showing them a globe <laughs> right anyway we're off track let's continue denise strata thank you very much leonhard tamosis by the way what, I, I actually have a very good friend who is a creationist and it shows you. Like the, the fossils are... Yeah, so that the Earth is only 5,000 years old. And Adam Yo, and if Satan's going to tempt me with something, it better not be with some fucking <laughs> fossils. <laughs> That's fossils. not very sexy. Anyway, the fact of the matter is... Um, and I was having a conversation <laughs> with him, and he says... So I said to him, all right, so you believe in creationism sure. and all that. Um, and because I believe in evolution and stuff, do you believe I'm going to go to hell? He's like, yes, you're going to hell. That's not a very nice thing to say. How can your friend say that? But he to actually you? said that to me. Yes, you're going to hell. But and how I'm can like, you he be your friend then? <laughs> because he wants I, you to burn. No, but other than this, no, but that's just his logic. Oh, his logic. It's okay. not like he says go to hell. Please go to hell. He, no, he no. just says that because I I believe in evolution and stuff, that I'm going to go to hell, and that's just the way it is. It's kind of like if you drink that poison, you will die. Uh, you know, if like, you believe in evolution, you will. I go can't to hell. do anything about it. Sorry. So I said, so you really think I'm going to hell? It's like yes, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We still had beers together. Okay, he's a great. I actually love the guy. He's a great guy. He's oh, okay. he's one of the he nicest. Just you're going to hell. Nicest people I know. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Nicest. Give the, give you the clothes off his back kind of guy. But he'll watch you burn for no, eternal it's, damnation. No, it's not his choice. You're right. You see, yeah. he, he didn't do it. He doesn't want you to burn in hell. But right. if you don't repent, but you will. And you don't change your ways, you will. So what I'm saying is, what I'm trying I to just, say, I can't. I my brain is too tiny apparently to understand how so it could be your friend that says you're going to burn in hell. This this is what I love about life and about people okay. is that you do not have to agree on everything. I I agree okay? with that. Yeah. And I people can that, be sure. outlandish and weird and have strange things, and they probably. He he thinks the same about me. He's like, that piece of shit thinks a chimp became a human. What the hell is that? Like, come yeah, on. that's true. He's probably like with I his understand. friends. He's like, I know this stupid guy. You wouldn't thinks, believe this. He yeah. actually 
actually thinks we were apes. Yeah, and he thinks he's not going to go to hell. It's <laughs> hilarious. Anyway, so the yeah. fact of the matter is, it doesn't yeah. matter if you've got he doesn't weird want you to go to hell. and wonderful views. You can it. still be friends with people. I absolutely agree. I, I love spending time with that guy. Right. In fact, the first time I ever watched um, A Christmas Story was with him. I just, I can't handle, like, intolerant stuff. Because, but, like, I mean, for, no, listen, yeah, hear me yeah, out. Yeah. I don't want to get on a religion. I'm Catholic. Yeah. I'm practicing right. Catholic. I go to church, right? Okay. I grew up Catholic. Yeah. Um, I personally think Catholicism is correct. But mm-hmm. I also think that if you believe in something else, you could be a good person and you will end up mm-hmm. in heaven, right? I think yeah. that if you, you could be a freaking, you worship a rock, right? Right. I don't believe in what you believe. Sure. Personally, we, we, we would disagree well, on that. But I don't think you're going to... to uh, for me, that fundamental problem about saying that someone's going to be damned, even if they're a good person who is morally correct, despite their religious belief, can go to hell. I think that's just really bad. Well, I mean, that, that's, that's a difference between uh, sure. you and a lot of other people. Is If you're more tolerant of more, uh, I, more different ideas, you're more sure. open-minded. You can still be a good person. I mean, that's the thing. You can be a good person if you're closed-minded. You can be mm. a good person if you're open-minded. But the thing is... If you're that close-minded, it kind of limits your scope and what you can do in life. Sure. And the way that you can interact sure. with people. And it, it limits a oh, lot yeah, of Oh, yeah, I'm not going to not have a discussion with these people. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm just, just saying that there's yeah. inherently nothing that really slights a person's character just because they have sure. some wacky, kooky beliefs. I, I agree. And like, I, still, I can still be friends. I, I'll I still agree. talk to a furry. Yeah, sure. You know? Sure. I'll still talk. I'm not going to go to their fursona, anthracon or whatever. No. You know, and do there are whatever. people out there that think you are, <laughs> but it's not true. I'm Just not... like people think I'm a brony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, your toys in the corner there. Mm. Yeah, might well, say your fur hat. <laughs> anyway, your fur hat over there, <laughs> whatever the, the helmet thing. It's a thing fur is suit. Oh, sorry, okay, sorry, no, I'm just kidding. Suit, but here, no, here's the thing. This is a weird conversation to get into, but I just wanted yeah. to say that it doesn't matter if people are closed-minded and have some weird I beliefs. I get that. I get that. Like a flat earth thing? That's the, my, uh, my point is that's kind of... It's not where I draw the line in the sand. I still talk to that person. I can be sure. friends with that person. But to me, that's a little shitty. It's I mean, a little it, it, shitty. Of course, I think it's a little <laughs> shitty, but I mean... If Don't he, say I'm going to hell. If he knew exactly what I thought about his like, sure, religion... Sure, sure, sure. But I don't think he's going too. to hell. No, me neither, but no. who knows? Sure. You know? Sure. <laughs> yeah anyway let's anyway continue. let's continue um mm-hmm. ccp says burn the books and those who read them but keep the books what okay <laughs> that's too big brain for me mm-hmm. case close 93 says winston have you watched months monsieur z's z's south africa video he says south africa will go the way of yugoslavia and break up do you agree i haven't seen that and i don't know if i agree with that i, I feel like it's just going to continue to decline until it just becomes zimbabwe Okay. You know? Yeah, I, I would actually probably agree Just, with that. That's all. It's not going to break up. There'll be some little spats here and there. But mm. Legal Eagle says, been reading what really happened in Wuhan. The author refers to one of her sources in chapter 24 as Lao Wai, 86, found the source of the coronavirus. Uh, that's YouTube, cool. Second, April 2nd, 2021. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. I that's appreciate really cool. Her. I haven't yeah. read that book yet. That's and Logo cool. App says, would you say companies are leaving China because of political tensions or are their prices rising for production? A bit of both. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, it, it really is becoming an expensive country mm. to deal with. Why did manufacturing leave places like America in the first place? It's because um, it became too expensive yeah. and you've got unions and yeah. you've got all these laws and mm-hmm. bylaws and, and environmental laws and stuff that prevent mm. you from putting out like a huge amount of production. But in China, because everything's so corrupt and, and relaxed there, they can pollute all they want. They can pay nothing for labor. They can, in fact, even get forced labor, as we've seen, or even prisoners and stuff. That's what the garlic industry does so well, by the way. You should look into that. It's quite fascinating. The garlic industry is very bad. Yeah, but it's fascinating yes. what they do. Is they force prisoners to peel the garlic by hand and yeah. stuff. It's terrible what they do with it's their teeth and Forced things. labor, yeah. Um, and it's forced. They don't have to pay for that because no, it's and Your garlic potentially comes from that, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, look into that. It's kind of interesting. But they've got that edge. Grow your own. But because China has now grown this big middle class and uh, you know the, the quality of life has improved so much, people are demanding more, higher wages and that sort of thing. And so it's becoming less and less... Um, appealing to mm-hmm. start a new factory in China, for instance, because labor costs are actually not that much cheaper at the end of the day. Yeah. Because think about all the transportation costs, all of the costs of setting up a factory there and everything. It's true. It kind of evens out almost. For right? sure. Mm. That's a good point. Uh, let's let's finish off. Okay, we're going to finish with a worldview. Okay, worldview, guys, where we talk about what's going on in the world, specifically to do with China. And we've got a kind of an interesting one to start us out here. Um, why don't you tell us about China's 
amazing snowboarder for the Olympics? Eileen Gu. Okay. Um, she is an American. Okay. From San Francisco, I believe. I'm sorry, I'm just going to pull up her information. Yeah, let's get her, her bio. Um, Biodome. Yeah. It's all over the place, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay, you'll get there. We've got a picture of her up on the screen there. She doesn't look Chinese to me, am I mistaken? She's, she's half, I believe. Oh, she's half Chinese, yeah. okay. Um, well, ethnically, you know, half racially or whatever you want to say. Yeah, Where, so, that's sorry. what I want to say. No, I know, I'm just, I'm just filling words in while I look for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't worry okay. about it. Um, I don't know where her stuff is. Anyway, I know the story. Um, okay, so. So Eileen Gu, oh, I think it's here. Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. um, so she is going to ski for... China. China. Mm-hmm. There's an issue with this. It's not, I don't want to get into the like, oh, you need to support whatever country you're a citizen of, even that's kind of how the Olympic Isn't Olympics that works. the whole point of the Olympics? It's like it's one country yes. against another. Correct. Isn't that dumb? So the issue I have with this is the hypocrisy. I personally yeah. don't give a shit if she wants to ski for whoever. She could ski for freaking the moon. Yeah. Whatever, okay. right? Sure. Personally, I think a lot of people are going to have uh, a problem. Mm -hmm. with the fact that you're not skiing for the country that you're a citizen of yeah but to she's young mm -hmm. and to say like oh you must be american even though you're half whatever chinese let's say her mom really instilled her chinese identity in sure her. that's fine whatever right be that's what you want that's not the thing the thing is china only recognizes one citizenship mm. and the olympics says that you have to be a citizen of that country to to perform sports for that country right right so somehow china when it's in their favor, skirts that law about there is no dual citizenship because mm -hmm. she's not a Chinese citizen. She didn't get Chinese citizenship to do this, right? right. So China all of a sudden can break their own law when it serves their own uh, purposes. Agendas, and right yeah. now their agenda is to say, look at this uh, American that decided to come back to the motherland. And she, d she doesn't like America so much that she wants to come to our home and she's so proud to be Chinese that she came back to her Zuguo, yeah. which is her motherland, and she will be uh, represent our Chinese spirit to do so. And they used it for state propaganda, and that's my issue with sure. it. Sure. Right? What do you think? Well, I mean, look at what we just spoke about, okay? With the reporter trying to report on the snail noodles, all of a sudden she's a, a foreigner, an yes. anti-China foreigner who's, right. who, who's ethnically Chinese. Sure. But now here you have a, a half-Chinese American. Sure is now suddenly going to represent China. You see right. how, how they swap it around? And again, I don't care like. that she's doing that. Yeah, I care about yeah. how the, the state is using that I care, in and the I, story. I care from the point of view that, like you said, you actually, as a Chinese person, you're not allowed dual citizenship. So change your law, China, and then I yeah. can support it. This is the crazy thing, because most rich Chinese people do have a Canadian citizenship as well. Of course, they don't let China know. They don't right. officially go in there and say, I also have a Canadian passport, because they're not allowed to. No. They would have to, by law, cancel yes. that. Correct. But all the rich middle-class Chinese that are investing overseas, they have a New Zealand, Australian, Canadian, American citizenship. You know, they have that, right? They, they have just this. don't tell them. They don't tell them. But in China, you're not allowed to have a dual um, nationality. And you know what also really pisses me off? If you watch my video that I released yesterday is this kind of ethnocentrism that you have in China. This whole, like, if you are not Chinese blood, then you are an enemy, you know, you're an other, okay? But they're willing to accept her just because it's currently um, something that benefits them, yeah. you know? But, you know, whenever there's a little political spat or something, she would not be accepted as being Chinese. No! You know? See, she would get dropped. This is my problem with this, is mm. that, okay... I honestly, I don't want to get involved with like controversial, like you trader type nonsense that people are going to throw around. What I want to say is that China is happy to take her in as a propaganda tool. Yes. But it's going to, it'll die at that because if she decided to say, yes, I'm Chinese and I want to represent China, that's fine. I'm totally mm -hmm. fine with that. But then if she said something like, but I disagree with the policy that uh, what they're doing in Xinjiang yeah. with the Uyghurs or whatever, they would drop her so fast yeah. if she exercised any freedom of speech. They would call her a traitor. They yeah. would say she's a dirty American running they dog. They would say what they said about uh, exactly, Emily Fong. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the issue I have with it. And it serves yeah. one purpose only. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's kind of ridiculous. Sure. Uh, do we have anything else in worldview, or is that no, that? That's, that's, that's it. Good. Okay. Good. All right, guys. So it's that part of the show which we call Yamcha. Okay, where we sit around and we talk. <laughs> nonsense uh yeah. we, we answer your questions yeah we do have some nonsense uh, some kind of fun stuff to show you actually but 
What? I just can't read that super chat. Oh. I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's... yeah, we can't read. No. <laughs> we can't read that. In fact, anyway, I have to remove that. No, you don't have to remove no, that. I have you, to remove you, that. You don't have to remove that. <laughs> you just. I gotta remove it. No, you don't have to. I gotta. Okay, fine. You remove it then. Uh, um, oh crap! I can't. Oh, you can't remove it. You no, messed I up. Can't remove it. What did you do? It's okay. Anyway, guys, um, so for those of you who are watching live right now, we're going to get into Yum Cha. You're going to enjoy it. We're going to leave it up for the weekend. But on Mondays, yes. we actually cut out this section. Yes. Okay. And uh, the reason we cut it out is, um, uh-oh, did you just... This is bad.